Mm. This is good. You never told me you knew how to cook. Because I don't know how to cook. We're eating McDonald's. Hmm. Didn't notice. Ooh, but you know what would go good with this? Butter. Butter with a cheeseburger? That doesn't sound good at all, Chris. And I'm fat, I know what I'm talking about. Oh no, trust me, it's good. You have butter in the fridge, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure we don't. Found it. Uh, wait, that, that's actually not butter. <laughs> what do you mean, it says butter? Is this some type of Mexican butter? No, it's salsa. What's it doing in a butter container? I'm getting really tired of this uncultured swine. Listen, Chris, let me show you how resourceful Mexicans are, or what I like to call Mexican life hacks. What do you mean? When we finish using something, like this butter container, we don't throw it away, we recycle it. But what if you actually want butter? See, that's the fun part. You never know what you're gonna get until you open it. That doesn't sound fun at all. Oh, look. Right now, this is just a regular, everyday Mexican mole sauce jar. But as soon as you rip the labels off and you wash it, then you get a really good reusable drinking cup. Chris, where do you keep your pots and pans? Oh, we have a rack to hold them. See, that's a waste of money. We keep our pots and pans in the oven. That seems a little excessive. No, it's not. So I'm gonna take a wild guess here and assume that you still clean the stove at your house, right? Yes, just like anyone else. See, that's too much work. We just put foil over it. And when it gets dirty, we just change it to new foil. Okay, but is that much foil really necessary? Yeah, my abuelita did go a little overboard this time. Anyway, those are just a few examples. But there's dozens of other things we do, like uh, saving plastic bags from the store, putting water in soap containers, and stuff like that. I must admit, you guys are pretty resourceful. Oh, let me guess. This isn't really chocolate milk, but a container to hold something else. Wait, no, 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 no! That one is actually what it's supposed to be. Oh. I'm here! No, no, no! Why did you have to fall? Why are you talking to a broom? Placing this broom upside down behind the door is supposed to keep unwanted guests from coming into your house. AKA you. How is a broom gonna stop me from coming in? I don't know, but my mom used to do it when I was a kid and... Well, my dad never came back home, so it must work. Look, I don't have time to convince you, but my tia told me she felt negative energy here. So I need you to help me place these around the house. These just look like glasses of water. Yeah, they are. They'll help absorb any evil spirits and therefore purify the house. This sounds like fake superstitions. You don't actually believe in this stuff, do you? First of all, they're not superstitions. And of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Because they're just myths. I'm pretty sure there's no scientific backing to any of this. Not everything needs to be proved through science, Chris. Well, what other superstitions do you believe in? Not superstitions, but I don't know. There's a lot of them in Mexican culture, like make sure you don't sweep anyone's feet because you'll curse them with bad relationships forever. If someone smiles at your baby without touching them, then you have to rub them with an egg. An egg? Yeah. When you get hiccups, how do you make them go away? I don't. I just let them pass. There's a cure for that. And it's red string. All you have to do is lick it, place it on the forehead of the person that has hiccups, and voila, cured. That's disgusting. Oh, have you ever wondered why you never see a Mexican mom put her purse on the floor? Actually, no. I've never once wondered that. Well, that's because it's bad luck. Purse on the floor, money at the door. I don't see how that correlates, but okay. No, don't do that. When your palm is itchy, that means money's coming your way. But if you scratch it, that means it won't come. Who makes up these things? For the hundredth time, they're not made up. Every single one of these is true. Okay, if it's so true, then if I... 
Hold this broom upside down, then you should go away. Oh look, you're still here. See, it's just a superstition. Actually, it's supposed to be behind the door. And this isn't your house, so it wouldn't work anyway. Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt, but do you know where the baby's bottle is? Look, I'm gonna sweep her feet. Oh no, she's cursed forever. Why did you do that? I told you not to sweep anyone's feet. Sorry, I didn't know it was that serious. Maybe I should just go back home before she comes back and tries to kill me. Cute baby, by the way. Did he just smile at my baby without touching her? I'll go get the egg. No, 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 not today, guys. I just wanted to sleep in for once. What? What's happening? Do you not hear the music? My mom's gonna make us clean. How do you know that? Chris, brace yourself. Ya levántate. Ponte a limpiar, huevón. What just happened? She told us to get up and start cleaning. How did you know she was going to say that? The music, Chris, the music. In Mexican households, if you ever wake up to music from artists like Vicente Fernandez, Juan Gabriel, uh, Selena... Qu oh, I love Selena Gomez. Not Selena Gomez, Selena Quintanilla, you uncultured swine. Like I was saying, if you wake up to that type of music, forget about any of the plans you made, because you're going to be cleaning all day. So we're not going to go to the mall today? No, Chris, we can't. That's not fair. We already had this planned. Uh, yeah, but I live in a Mexican household, and in Mexican households, nothing is fair. You're 21 years old. Just tell her you have plans already. Dude, it doesn't matter how old I am. I live with a Mexican mom. Her house, her rules. But she likes you. So, so maybe if you ask her, maybe she'll let us out. I don't know why you agreed to ask. Brando, you missed the spot. <laughs> Dad, Dad, I have big news. Why, you took out the trash? N no, but I... Did you wash the dishes? No. So what have you been doing? The dishes aren't washed, the trash is still here, and the mop isn't poured. You know what I mean. I'm at work all day and you're sitting around doing nothing. Dad, I have big news. Why can't you just be excited for me for once? I'll get excited once Mexico wins the World Cup. No, what happened? Whatever. It's not like you've ever been excited for me anyways. What are you talking about? Mom said when I was a baby, you didn't even care about my first steps. Dad, dad. <laughs> Dad, dad. Ya que puedes caminar, puedes salir de la casa. Toma, saca la basura. Well, the first year you didn't do anything. All you did was eat, sleep, and poop. And six years later, you're still doing the same thing. Why are you always so negative? A negative makes a positive. You mean two negatives make a positive? Whatever. You don't care about anything. That one time I got words from baseball, you weren't even there. Why would I want to go to a banquet when I can stay here and watch football? No era penal. See, you're never happy with anything I do. Not true. Remember that one time you were 12? Oh my god, no lo creo. I'm so proud of you cleaning. I knew you could do it. Saca la basura. See, I was proud of you. This isn't going anywhere. I give up. Not like you'll care about me getting into college anyways. Wait, what? I got into college. I started in the fall. Why didn't you tell me? I tried, but you started going out that I don't do anything. Well, that's besides the point. But mijo, you're the first person in our family to go to college. I know, that's why I was really excited to tell you. Everything I did was for this moment. What do you mean? Well, when you were learning how to walk, I would tell you to take out the trash to encourage you to take more steps. 
Llevado a la basura. Eso, mijo, a la basura. I didn't go to your banquet because I had to work to pay for your baseball. And when you fell, I was just happy you cleaned up. Dad, I didn't realize how much you did for me. I just want you to know that I've always been proud of you. And this moment right here, you getting into college, reminds me that it's all worth it. This isn't just a triumph for you, mijito. It's a triumph for the whole family. And we're all proud of you. I love you, Dad. I love you too. Ahora saca la basura. I'm serious. You haven't done it. Where are we? I have no idea. The last thing I remember is Ramon's mom giving us salsa to try. And now we're here. What's that thing near Ramon's mom? Mom? What are you doing there? And why are we here? All of you in this room are disobedient, lazy, and estupidos. And all of you are a bunch of mocosos that don't listen to your moms. What? I listen to my mom. Mis nalgas, you do. I go to church with your mom, and she always tells me how you never take out the trash when she asks. Okay, maybe I'm not the best at taking out the trash. And you, Aaron, do my mama dijo that you never wash your dishes. Marcos, your mom says all you do is have an attitude and talk back. Chris, well, Chris, I just don't like you. That's why you're here. And Ramon, oh, Ramon, Ramon. Every time I look at you, I just want to. <clears throat> um, sorry I make you feel like that, Mom. So why are we here? Por qué? We're gonna play some games. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds like fun. And the losers will be eliminated with a chakla. Oh, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Player three, seven, eight. Flip the tortilla on the comal with your hand. Flip a tortilla with my hand? How am I supposed to do that? Bro, just grab it with your finger and flip it. Are you crazy? I'll burn my fingers. Oh, a fork, how convenient. Come on, man. Who uses a fork to flip a tortilla? Whatever, let me do it my way. There. Task completed. Player 378 eliminated. Player 248. In the next game, you must figure out which cookie tin on the table actually contains cookies. What do you mean? They're all cookie containers. No, no, it's a trap, bro. Every Mexican knows that there's never actually any cookies in there. I'll shake them. And now listen for a sound. They all sound the same. The second one sounded different. No, I'm pretty sure the first one has the cookies. You guys are gonna get them eliminated. It was clearly the third one. Ah. I think it's the second one. No, 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 no. Okay, I can do this. I've opened these up my whole life. I 
did it. I actually did it. Nice! That's cool. Player no. one. No, 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 not Marcos, no, no. Wait, why are you so sad? He owed me $20. Now I'm never getting it back. Oh. Player 007 and player 432. Congratulations on making it to the final round. For the last game, you will be playing Loteria. I guess that's not too bad. I do have good luck with Loteria. I always take my bola's money. These are your cards. Wait, can I switch mine? Yeah, I don't really like mine either. Cállense! The card you have is the card you get. No card switching. What? Come on, no one ever uses the first card they get. Yeah. Okay, okay. You can switch one time. <laughs> nice. Hey, you got number seven? I want a seven. That's my number, bro. I'm sorry. <sighs> All right, you called it. Pick a different number. Ooh, this one. All right. Time to begin the game. La Rosa. El Pino. Just you and me left, buddy. Right now we're not buddies. You're in my way of winning. <laughs> you really think you can beat me? I'm the best at this game. It's literally impossible to be good at this game. It's all luck. That's what you think. All right. Well, bring it on then. El Pino. La botella. Looks like I have one spot left. Me too. La Estrella. Loteria! 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 Woo! No way! Wait! Don't celebrate yet. What? My card is full. I won! Holy! it seems like something is wrong. What do you mean? I played fair and square. You put a bean on el corazón. I haven't caught that yet. That's not possible. I double checked. Oof, looks like someone messed up. You wouldn't hurt me, right, mom? I'm your son. No, pero I didn't raise a cheater. Adios. Oh, yeah! I told you guys I would win. Congratulations, player 432. You will now move on to the next game. You will have to eat caldo during the summer. What is the meaning of life? 10 37 p.m. What? Ramon! Tú y tu amigo quieren jugar lotería? No, mom. Can't you see we're busy right now? What's lotería? No sabes qué es lotería? Tú eres el diablito. <sighs> you can't just go around telling people you don't know what lotería is. What are you trying to do? Give my mom a heart attack? Well, I don't know what it is. <gasps> My mom was right about you. You are a diablito. So, are you going to explain it to me, or...? Of course I am. This is Mexican Survival Guide, after all. Just follow me. Okay, Chris, so you want to learn more about Loteria. Well, first thing you need to know is that it's one of the most frustrating things ever. Frustrating? Yes! You can play 10 games in a row and win nothing, but as soon as you swap cards with your cousin Carlos, he starts winning with the card that was yours. That was your card. You chose it from the beginning. He stole your glory. But when you win, it's good times. Anyway, this is a Loteria card. Everyone plays a little different, but 
The goal of the game is to fill it up with these. A rock? No, it's a pinto bean. So how do I fill up a card with a pinto bean? With this. Someone draws a card and reads the name. If the name happens to be on your card, then you put a bean over that spot. So this is just Mexican bingo. Well, yeah, but it has more pictures. Ramon, ¿ya están listos? Ah, todo nos falta un lugar. A ver quién gana. Jesucristo, lotería. Yo gané. Mom, you can't just make up cards. That's cheating. Cállate, mocoso. Don't call your mama cheater. Uno, dos, todo. Woo! That's three wins in a row. Do you smell that? What is it? Chris, get down! What's happening? <coughs> Mexican tear gas! Who's attacking us? My mom. Why? What did we do? We didn't do anything. She's just roasting chilies. Whereas every victim calls it asando el chile. My eyes are starting to burn. Oh, tell your mom to stop. It's too late. The process has already begun. I always have this ready for moments like this. Wait, why do you get a gas mask? Uh, I have a brighter future, so I have more to lose? All right, follow me. So why is your mom roasting chilies? She's cooking. But why does she need to roast the chilies? Roasting enhances the flavor of the chili. It adds a bit of char and a hint of smokiness. But you risk your life doing it. We should go save your mom then. She's probably unconscious. Oh, she's fine. Mexican moms are built like tanks. Their eyes and lungs are made of titanium alloy or something. They can withstand anything. Well, have you tried asking her to warn you when she roasts chilies at least? I've confronted her, I've wrote letters, I've even tried witchcraft, but nothing seems to help. It's just something you have to be prepared for when living in a Hispanic household. I don't want to experience that again. It was terrible. I guess I'll go back home since we can't go back inside. What? I don't have my keys. I have to go back in there. Are you sure you want to go back in there? I have no choice. Tell my parents to feed my gerbils. Wow, he's so brave. He didn't even take the gas mask. Sana, sana, colita de rana. Si no sana hoy, sanará mañana. Hi, I'm aspiring investigator Anthony Chorizo, and today I'm going to be examining this famous Hispanic phrase. For years, parents have repeated this quote to the children to heal their injuries. But does this phrase actually have the power to heal or is it simply a placebo? I'm going to begin my investigation with Ramon Sanchez. He claims this phrase has saved him numerous times. Thank you for doing this interview with me, Ramon. 
to start off, can you explain to me the first time you experienced this phenomenon? Yeah, um, I was about five years old. I was running inside the house. I tripped and scraped my knee. Next thing I know, my mom's rubbing my knee and then says, sana sana colita de rana. Si no sana hoy, sanará mañana. And what happened after that? Well, the pain stopped. And you think the phrase is what helped you? After she said that, it was as if nothing ever happened. Interesting. So now that you're an adult, what do you do when you get injured? I actually go to this lady named Veronica. She specializes in sana sana colita de rana. I guess I have to give this Veronica a visit. Uh, well, she only takes appointments, so you would have to call her and make an appointment first. That's not what I meant. Thanks to Ramon's tip, I decided I needed to investigate Veronica. Apparently, she is known as the local healer in her community. But how does someone with no record of attending medical school cure people? We just arrived to Veronica's residence. Hopefully, she'll be willing to speak with us. Hi, uh, I'm Anthony Chorizo. I'm with the ABCDF Network, and I'm doing an investigative story. I was wondering if I could ask you a couple questions. About what? About a certain phrase that you're known for. Mm, sana, sana colita de rana? Yes, uh, would you be willing to sit down for an interview? No, no quiero entrevistas, no hago preguntas, no nada. Bye. It looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Since Veronica is unwilling to speak with me, I decided to put up posters around her neighborhood in a search for leads. About 30 minutes passed when I got a call. A person who I'm going to name, Joe, claims they're a client of Veronica. For his safety, he asked for his identity to be hidden. So Joe, how long have you been going to Veronica? Uh, about four years. What exactly do you go to her for? For everything. If I'm ever in any pain, she always heals me. And you're not concerned that she doesn't have a medical license? Not really. If she heals me, then who cares? Don't you think it's a little strange that just by her saying a phrase, it heals you? I mean, at first I did find it strange, but it works for me. She even healed my broken heart by saying that. Is Joe telling the truth? I find it hard to believe Veronica is healing her patients with only a simple phrase. So I installed a hidden microphone on her window to see if I could hear what else is happening. I was able to capture audio from one of her patients. This is what I recorded. So, how can I help you today? I was in a real bad accident and now I'm paralyzed from the waist down. I was hoping you can help me out. Oh, yes, of course. Just give me a second. Okay, let's start. Sana, sana, colita de rana. Si no sana hoy, sanará mañana. Okay, all done. What do you mean? How are you done? Try standing up. Standing up? Oh my god. You, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I can walk again. How is it possible this man went from being paralyzed to jumping high enough for the MBA? I needed to speak with the medical professional. Dr. Jimenez, thank you for taking this interview with me. I guess I'll start by saying, is it possible for words to heal someone? Short answer is no. What is the long answer? Well, the long answer is absolutely not. Interesting. I'm doing an investigation on a popular Hispanic phrase that people claim has healing powers. The phrase goes like this. Sana sana colita, colita de rana. Si no sana hoy, sanará mañana. Yes. I take it you've heard this phrase before? Of course. I grew up hearing it. So with your professional medical background, can you give me insight into why people may think this phrase heals? Because it does. Uh, I'm sorry, what? That phrase heals people. So, do you apply that phrase in your medical practice? Oh no, I can't do that. Only Hispanic mothers have the power to heal with those words. I see. Well, thank you, Dr. Jimenez. I think you've helped me enough. My investigation so far has led me to believe the phrase may in fact 
have healing power, but I still wanted to hear from the source. Okay, Veronica, quit with all the games. How are you really healing these people? Are you a witch? No, 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 no. Yo no soy una bruja. If you're not a witch, then how are you healing these people with a simple phrase? I don't. I saw you make a paralyzed man walk again. That is clearly the work of black magic. He was never paralyzed. Él está medio loco. Wait, so you're telling me that you didn't actually heal him? No, eso es imposible. Sana, sana, colita de rana doesn't actually heal you. It makes you think that you feel better. And there it is, the truth I have been searching for. I can now confirm that this famous Hispanic phrase cannot actually heal. It is simply a placebo. Hispanic mothers have fooled us for centuries into thinking they possess some magical healing powers, when in fact they are no more than con artists. My name is Anthony Chorizo, and this concludes my investigation. Why are you so obsessed with me? Boy, I wanna know. Ay, mijo. Where did I go wrong? Mijo, stop doing those stupid dances. Go outside and do some yard work. <gasps> did you pitch your nails, mijo? I mean, no, ben, no, ben, come here. Dad, come dad, come yes, here, mijo. Dad, come no, here. Come My here. My name is Anthony, and I'm a TikToker living in a Mexican household. Being a TikToker is kind of hard in a Mexican household. My dad is old school and he doesn't understand that TikTok is cool. Thank you for helping me today, mijo. This is what you should be doing every day, working outside like a man. Didn't even notice. No mijo, ¿qué estás haciendo? I'm making a TikTok. You're dancing with a shovel, mijo. That's not a girl. Get back to work. Let, let me just finish this TikTok. Let me just finish this TikTok. Dad, why did you have to give me a son like this? I pray every day, I go to church all the time, and you give, you give me this? <sighs> Shouldn't wanna die, uh, I might start a riot. Mijo, Mijo, are you okay? Are you crying, everything okay? Dad, you messed up my TikTok. <sighs> Mijo, I thought you were crying. Hijo de tu madre. I don't understand kids these days. Back in my day, we would work the fields con las puras manos. Every day of my life, since I was three. But my son, all I see him doing every day, all day, girly dances like this. And he's on the phone all day, todo el día, haciendo swipe, swipe, swipe. Parece como, parece como, como un zombie. Hey, mijo, I'm gonna go to Swami, you wanna go? Mijo, mijo. Huh, what? You wanna go to the Swami? No, I I'm good. Mijo, how long have you been sitting there? I don't know, like seven hours? Seven? Siete horas, mijo! Mijo, what's so good about this app? I mean... It's cool to watch people dance. Mijo, all she's doing is moving her arms around. I did this when I was a baby. Ya me voy. I don't know why it's so hard for my dad to accept new things. And he's always talking trash about my style. This is fresh. Oh, look at my daughter throwing on her makeup. You getting ready for a quinceanera, mijo? <laughs> dad, I told you, this is TikTok fashion. I'm an e-boy. Keyword, mijo, boy. You should dress more like a man, like your brother. Why do you have Pablo as your screensaver and not me? He's the only son that came out right. Whatever, Dad. It's to the TikTok. Uh, a mí no me gusta. I don't like it. It really pissed me off, pero he's my son, my hijo. So I try to keep an open mind for him and see things from his perspective. Yeah, I got the juice. Came in the party like I'm the man. Me and my crew. Hey, 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 Nico, why is it so close to my face? I don't like it. That's how it works. Miko, turn it off. He's scaring me. That's how the effect works, Dad. The effect? Miko, he was following my face. Ese app es el diablo, Miko. El diablo. Unfortunately, I don't think my dad is ever going to understand my TikTok life. Miko, I'm not playing with you. Take off your nail polish. 
It's embarrassing. Oh my God. So what are the plans for today? I don't know. We could watch the political debate on TV. Dude, I'd rather watch paint dry. Ooh, that sounds fun too. That's just a saying. I don't actually want to watch paint dry. Me neither. Hey, boys. Why don't we ask your mom? Mrs. Garcia. No, 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 no. That, that, that's not a good idea. Brando and I were wondering if you have any ideas on what we should do today because we're extremely bored. You're bored? Ponte a limpiar. You never tell a Mexican mom you're bored. They'll force you to clean. But the house is already clean. It doesn't matter. Mexican parents will find something for you to do. My bad. Guess we're gonna clean today then. Chris, put shoes on, pendejo. What was that about? Mexican moms and abuelas hate when you walk around the house barefoot because they believe that stepping on the cold floor will make you sick. Well, if the floor's cold, why not just turn on the heater? That's another thing you can't do in a Mexican household. Turning on the AC or the heater is forbidden because it's a waste of money. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. What else can't I do? There's only a couple other things you can't do. I have the list right here. Oh, thank God it's not that long. <clears throat> number one, never say you don't wanna to go to church. Number two, don't ever go anywhere without permission. Number three, never say que, only say mande. Number four, don't forget to turn off the beans. Number five, never cuss at or around your parents. Number six, never forget to say bye to every single one number of your Number nine, don't tell your abuela you're Number seven, don't care at the Number two, break. 575, so never throw away plastic bags. Do you know how horrible it is to throw plastic bags into the environment? Number 999, don't talk back to your parents. And number 1000, don't cry. Don't cry? Yeah. Usually Mexican parents will say something along the lines of, stop crying before I give you something to cry about. I gotta say, that's a lot to take in. How do you even remember all of this? Well, when you've been hit by the chancla like a million times for violating these rules, you start to learn pretty quick. I see. Oh wait, am I allowed to scratch my head? Or is there a rule against that too? <sighs> no, Chris. There isn't a rule against that. Grease. What the heck? I thought you said there wasn't a rule against that. There isn't. I think my mom just wanted to throw a chancla at you. Ramon, what were your thoughts on the chapter? I thought it was quite intriguing. I think the theme of patience really resonates with me. I also discovered... Mom, what are you doing? I'm in the middle of class. Cállate, estoy asando chile. No me hables así. My name's Ramon, and I'm in quarantine in a Mexican household. Now that I'm home all day, my mom takes advantage of it. My daily schedule consists of cleaning, cleaning, and more cleaning. Ya levántate! Ponte a limpiar! What? Come on! I cleaned all day yesterday! ¿Y qué? Hoy no has hecho nada. Be Mexican, they said. It'll be fun, they said. How much longer do I have to clean for? Hasta que esté limpio. My fingers are all pruny now. I can't even feel them anymore. No exageres. Yo siempre limpio toda la casa y no me quejo. Now that we're in quarantine, all my classes are online. But let me tell you, Online school is impossible in a Mexican household. Besides A, B, and C. They're often called the Pythagorean equation. A squared plus Choi, B stop! I'm in class right now! Choi, stop! I'm in class right now! Who's that weird looking person on the computer? That's my professor! Can they hear us? Yes, so be quiet. Did you know that Ramon still pees in his bed? No, I don't. I don't. Ramon pees in his bed! Ramon pees in his bed! Ramon, I hate my life! No one should bother me here. Mom! I came outside to get away from everyone. You can't go inside? Pero mira el día, está muy bonito. It's raining. ¿Me estás contestando? No, no, no. Ah, 
Ay, estos niños de verdad que te digo. No. I understand that the situation we're in is serious, but I feel like my mom is overreacting. If I even have the slightest cough, she goes in overdrive. Acuéstate, mijo. Acuéstate, por favor. I'm not sick. I was just choking on my food. Mom. Quiero que te tomes esto. Quiero que te lo pongas, por favor. I don't have the virus. ¿Y tú cómo sabes? Yo no estoy exagerando. Solo quiero cuidar a mi hijo. Hasta le hice una máscara para cuando vaya a la tienda. Mijo, mira lo que te hice. A knitted mask? Sí, mijo. Es para protegerte cuando salgas. You know it has holes, right? It's literally not going to do anything. Duré horas haciéndote eso. Ni las gracias me das. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for the mask. De nada, mijo. Póntela. Si la usas, te va a proteger de todos los virus que hay en el aire. Sure. Whatever you say, mom. I don't know how much longer I can do this, but I'm slowly losing my mind. Ramón, saca la basura. Please. Send help. ¿Oíste? Yes, mom. I'll do it right now. Oh, hey, Chris. You got here right on time. We're cutting the rosca de reyes. What is that? It's a uh, dessert. Oh, I definitely want a piece then. Are you sure you want a piece? Yeah, why not? I can't say no to dessert. All right, if you insist. Cool, does everyone have a piece now? Let's see. Oh my God, I was pregnant. I just coughed up a baby. I can't afford this. I can't take on this responsibility. I don't know Chris, to... calm down. The baby was just inside of the bread. So you guys tried to kill me? No. Chris! What's wrong with you guys? I'm filing a police report on you, you, and especially you because I know you made it. What the heck, man? I'm only seven years old. Chris, calm down. Calm down? You guys just tried to kill me. <sighs> Can you guys excuse us? Chris is being ignorant, as usual. So why did you guys try to kill me? We didn't try to kill you, Chris. Today is Dia de los Reyes Magos. What is that? Make Chris choke at a baby doll day? No, Chris, it's Three Kings Day. It's a celebration on January 6th that represents the day the three kings, or wise men, that brought gifts to baby Jesus. So you guys celebrate by trying to kill someone? How many times do I have to tell you we didn't try to kill you? If I wanted you dead, you'd be dead. Anyway, this is a very important holiday for many Hispanics, and gifts are actually exchanged on this day too. Wait, so you guys get two Christmases? Well, usually just the kids. The night before El Dia de los Reyes, children put their shoes out, and when they wake up in the morning, they're filled with presents. Oh. So, what's the purpose of this then? On El Dia de los Reyes, it's common for Mexicans to create a cake in the shape of a crown, and then place a little baby statue in it, representing baby Jesus. And this cake is called the Rosca de Reyes, or King's Cake. So I almost ate baby Jesus? Oh my God, I'm going to hell. They don't have mammies in hell. I want to see my mom. I might see Grandma Irene. Chris, I relax. You didn't really eat baby Jesus. It just represents baby Jesus. So I'm not going to hell? Well, I can't promise you that, but you're not going to hell for this. But in Mexican culture, whoever gets the piece of cake with the baby in it has to host the dinner for Dia de la Candelaria on February 2nd. And lucky for you, or unlucky for you, you're the one that got it. So I have to host a dinner party at my house now? I never agreed to this. Yeah, I don't like hosting either. That's why usually I just eat the baby. And? I won! Um, no you didn't. That's only three. You're supposed to get four in a row. Four? Says who? The name of the game? It's called Connect Four. 
Oh, that's why I never win. Well, want to play Minecraft now? I see my cousin play it on her phone all the time. Looks fun. No, dude, I don't want to play video games. See, that's what's wrong with kids these days. They always want to play on their phones. When I was a kid, all I did was eat mazapan and play with my trompo. What? That's crazy. I used to have one too. Really? Yeah, I loved playing my trumpet, although I wasn't really good at it. I said trompo, Chris, not trumpet. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's a traditional Mexican toy. So, kind of like an Xbox? What? No! First of all, that's not even Mexican. Secondly, an Xbox isn't even traditional. You know what? I know the perfect person to educate you on Mexican toys. Wait, before I introduce you, just know, my deal can be a little blunt sometimes. Bon jeez! Como esta, mijo? Bien, tío. ¿Y usted? Bien, que bueno, que bueno. ¿Y este gringo quién es? This is my friend Chris. Hi there. Hey, Chris. Tiburcio, mucho gusto. ¿Por qué tiene las manos tan suaves? Y luego el pelo estropajo usado también, mira. What did he say? Uh, he... He said he likes your hair. Oh, thanks. Uh, I use coconut oil. Coconut oil? Coconut. Mm. Anyway, tío, the reason we're here is because Chris doesn't know anything about Mexican toys. And I remember you used to play with them, right? Ah, no, mijo. I, I'm too old now. I do not play with these anymore. Really? No, no, I keep, I keep. I have with me all the time. Look, I have these here and then, and then, and, and then these and then these here. Hold on. Is that the trompo you were talking about earlier? Ah, no, this is a, is a valero. This is the trompo. Here, you hold these, mijo. Hold these, okay? Okay, I show you how these go. You you get this stick, right? and then you get this here, and you put it like this. Ah, see, sí. okay. And then what you do is you get the, the string like this, and you have to make it again. Ah, see, sí, I, I lose. I have to start all over. And then you go like this. Okay, you try now, okay? Ay, cuidado. No, maybe, maybe, maybe you try another one. This, this, you're gonna hurt yourself, mijo, okay? This is more easy. This is Mexican tablitas magica. Eh? What is this witchcraft? Ah, no, mijo, it's not witchcraft. It's a Mexican engineer. Eh? It's hour and hour of fun. Okay, you try, here. Uh, oh, okay, 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 you get this, okay? I, I show you one more, okay, mijo? Eh, this is a Mexican trompo okay and you have this string right? and, and you go like this and and then you throw on the floor and it spin oh i know what this is this is like a normal top like a beyblade uh, no no this is a mexican trompo i know how to use this check this out no 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 be careful this is very dangerous i got it and that's the mexican belt you should run Ven pa acá, mijo. Ven pa acá. Uh, Ramon, I don't have much time left. I just wanted to tell you I appreciate everything you've done for me. You're my best friend. Oh, and tell my mom I love her. Chris, you just have a common cold. Stop overreacting. It's not just a common cold. I feel like I'm in my deathbed. Do you think you could take me to the hospital? The hospital? Are you crazy? Do you have hospital money? Uh, yeah, I have insurance. Oh. Well, no, I'm not gonna take you to the hospital for a cold. That's a waste of money. You just wanna see me die, don't you? Chris, you just have a cold. You're not gonna die. Anyway, I got exactly what you need to get better. Oh, thank you. I could really use some medicine right now. This is Vaporub. Yeah, put some of that on your chest and you'll feel better in no time. Vapor rub isn't going to help me. Everyone knows that Vaporu is the magical cure-all medicine. My mom has used it on me since I was a kid and I look healthy. Uh, yeah, I think I'll pass on the Vapor rub then. All right, I got something that will for sure make you feel better. <sighs> Did you just pull a two liter bottle out of your pants? Yeah. 
Anyway, this bad boy is a must in any Hispanic medicine cabinet and is guaranteed to make you feel better. A bottle of 7-Up is for sure not gonna heal me. Trust me, that with the combination of Vaporu is the cure to anything. Even a uh, broken heart. Really? Nah, I'm just kidding. There's no cure for that. Well, I think I'll pass on this one also. Chris, you say you want to get better, but you don't want to use anything I'm giving you. Well, yeah, I want something that's scientifically proven to work, not some home remedies. These aren't home remedies. Okay, they are home remedies, but that doesn't mean they don't work. All right, you want something that's scientifically proven? I got something for you. <sighs> what are you pulling out of your pants this time? Caldo de res. This is scientifically proven to work. Ramon, I can guarantee you that soup isn't proven to cure sickness. Now, can you stop giving me all these home remedies? So, is it too late to recommend aloe vera then? I don't even have a cut. How is that gonna help me? You know what? I'll just drive myself. Wait, let me just try one last thing. I guarantee you this will make you feel better. All right, whatever, last one. Okay, okay. Sana, sana, colita de rana. Si no sana hoy, sanará mañana. Did you just perform witchcraft on me? No, Chris, it's a famous saying in Hispanic culture that makes all the pain go away. Yeah, I still feel bad. I think I'm just gonna drive myself. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. The power of the Virgen de Guadalupe. I miss you so much, baby. I can't wait to see you again. Oh, I miss you too, my little boobaloo. We should just run away together. Ramon! ¿Qué te dije? Ponte a limpiar! My name is Ramon, and I'm still quarantined in a Mexican household. Last time we talked, I mentioned that my mom has been forcing me to clean every day. Well, now she's making me clean every day, every other day, and every other other day. And I'm finally done. Now I can watch some Netflix after I shower. Hey, a donde vas? To go shower? I finished what you told me to do. No, you didn't. No has terminado ni la mitad de tus quehaceres. What do you mean? I've been cleaning for hours. Ni has limpiado la botella de tapatillo. What? And you haven't scrubbed the ceiling. Mira nomás. Who scrubs the ceiling? ¿Me estás contestando? Te pego. There's no way cleaning this much is healthy. If anything, all these cleaning chemicals are gonna kill me. Ramon, ayuda, mi hijo está atorado, ¿sí? Okay. Oh my God! Oh my God, it's in my eye! I can't see! Calmate, hijo! Oh, it burns! I think I'm going blind! Oh my God! What was that for? Paraste de llorar. Gracias. Abuela was right about her. I'm about three weeks from graduating and I don't think I'm gonna make it. My dad started doing all these home improvements and is always calling for my help. Mijo, can you come outside and help me real quick? Dad, I can't right now. I need to finish this assignment. Uh, assignment means nalgas. Come on, I need your help to build a second shed. Why do we need a second shed? Por qué no? I already got the wood. I need to turn this in by three. No, you need to help me. Apurate. ¿Qué estás haciendo? Put that thing away and use both hands. Dad, graduation depends on this assignment. Okay, pues. You don't want to listen? Vas a ver. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, mijo, look what I made you. A metal face mask? Si, sí. esta bonita, eh? And I thought my mom's face mask was bad. Thank you, dad. 
Since we're in quarantine, I never get to see my girlfriend, so I have to FaceTime her. And let's just say there's no privacy in a Mexican household. No, I asked you first. No, it answers to Okay, okay, fine. If I was next to you right now, I would... Mom, I'm on the phone! Haz de cuenta de que no estoy aquí. Y además, no me gusta cuando hablas con esa muchacha tonta. What did your mom say? Uh, nothing. She just said how pretty you are. Oh, she's so sweet. Ay, qué mensa. I can't wait for things to go back to normal. But until then, I'll be right here. Suffering. A lot. Oh man, Ramon's gonna be so scared. Boo! Chris, you're not gonna scare me that easily. I'm not like you. What? I do not get scared that easily. You kind of do. Seriously? I'm sorry, your face paint is scary. Anyway, aren't you a little too late for Halloween? It was two days ago. This face paint isn't supposed to be scary. And it's November 2nd, AKA Dia de los Muertos. So have a little respect. What's Dia de los Muertos? Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead? That sounds terrifying. It's a Mexican holiday, you uncultured swine. And it's actually really beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. So is face paint part of the holiday? Yeah, it's one of the many things that are done. Calaveras or skulls are part of the symbolism of Dia de los Muertos. So skulls are displayed in things like calaveras de azúcar, which are sugar skulls. Did you say sugar skull? Yes. Can I eat it? Um, no, this is for the ofrenda. Who's a frienda and why does she get to eat it? It is thought that the souls of the deceased come down on Dia de los Muertos to visit their families. And the families make ofrendas, which are decorated altars made with flowers, candles, and their loved one's favorite food and drinks. So when the deceased visit, they can enjoy their families and some of the things they enjoyed in life. So if I were to make an ofrenda for you, I would have to get a buffet? Actually, yeah, I would want a buffet on my ofrenda. But also, don't forget the pan de muertos, or the bread of the dead. It's a traditional Mexican sweet roll that is baked during Dia de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos is really beautiful and not scary at all. So it's a celebration of life, not death. Yes, exactly. It's also custom to go to the grave sites and clean and decorate them. And some people even bring music, whether it be a live band or a small speaker. Oh man, I was wrong for thinking it was scary. It's far from it. I love how the deceased are remembered by the family and still part of their lives. And the friend is beautiful. Yeah, it definitely is. Oh, I also love mayonnaise. Is that white bread? Yeah, he loved white bread. <laughs> Seems like me and this person have a lot in common. Wait, what's going on? I miss you, buddy. Ramon? Ramon! What's happening? Am I dead? I'm so confused! Ah! Hmm, it actually worked. Had to get rid of him somehow. I have no idea why I agreed to go on a hike. What are you even looking for? I'm looking for this guy. Bigfoot, we hiked six miles to look for a mythical creature? He's not a mythical creature. He's real. Sorry, Chris, but he's definitely a government conspiracy. Anyway, we should start heading back before it gets dark and a real creature like La Chupacabra gets us. Chupacabra? That sounds like something from Taco Bell. No, it's definitely not an item from Taco Bell. Then what is it? A thing of nightmares. It comes from the deepest trenches of misery and darkness. I grew up hearing very traumatizing stories about it as a kid. La Chupacabra is a creature that is feared in all of Latin America. There is said to be countless attacks with uneaten carcasses that were drained of blood and left behind, which is believed to be the work of La Chupacabra. Have people actually seen it? People have claimed to have seen it, but there's no actual proof. But I can tell you, 
No one has never not seen it. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, it makes sense, Chris. The name comes from the words chupar, which means to suck, and cabra, which means goat, aka the blood sucker of goats. What does it look like? Some say it looks like a hairless dog, while others say it has spikes. But only one thing is certain. It's freaking scary. What was that? Ramon, where are you going? Uh, I just finished telling you about the chupacabra, and then we hear a noise in the bush. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm getting out of here. Wait, we should see what it is. Imagine being the first people to actually see the chupacabra. And then what? Wait for it to suck out all of our blood? Yeah, no thank you. I'm going home. If La Chupacabra is as real as you say it is, the smarter thing would be for us to stick together. I just had to leave the house today, didn't I? Okay, fine. I swear, if it is La Chupacabra, I'm throwing you on the floor so I can eat you first. I bet La Chupacabra isn't as scary as people say it is. It's probably misunderstood. Wait, is that blood? Did you just say blood? It must be close. And I'm close to having a heart attack. Come on, this way. <sighs> Are you eating right now? I eat when I get nervous. Don't judge me. You must always be nervous then. Oh my god, no! Did you find a carcass? Or la chupacabra? <laughs> Something killed this mayonnaise. What kind of monster would do this? We're out here trying to find La Chupacabra, and you're crying over dead mayonnaise? Forget the mayonnaise. We need to get out of here. We need to bury the mayonnaise. We can't just leave it like this. Mr. Mayo! All right, I got this. No, you don't. <laughs> Can you stop? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Seriously, Chris, stop. Ramon, te calmas o te calmo? I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Please, don't tell dad. What just happened? And why did you react like a little kid? You wouldn't know. You didn't live through it. Well, all right then. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's just too hard to talk about. That's fine. I didn't really want to talk about it anyway. Your turn. All right, I'll tell you. It's a saying that a lot of Mexican moms tell their kids when they're being disobedient. It means calm down or else I'll calm you down. Okay, and how would they calm you down? Like this. Never mind. I, I understand how. That or la chancla. I see. Hearing that phrase will make any Mexican kid calm down real quick. I still have nightmares. That sounds horrible. Yeah, it is. And Mexican moms have a lot of other sayings too. Like when they say, Le voy a decir a tu papá cuando llegue. What does that mean? It means I'm going to tell your dad when he gets here. That one makes my heart stop. Your heart stops because you're excited to see your dad? No, he's at work all day. Do you think he's gonna be ecstatic that his son isn't listening to his mom? Then why don't you just listen to your mom? I never really thought of that. But that's besides the point. Once I heard that saying, stress levels were through the roof just waiting for my dad to get home. Then once my mom told my dad, let's just say my body became lifeless after experiencing his wrath. Wow. That seems pretty scary. But it sounds like you were just bad growing up. Like those kids with silver teeth and boogers. I never even had silver teeth. And I wasn't even a bad kid. I just wanted to have fun. But like my mom always said, Mientras vivas en mi casa, sigues mis reglas. What does that mean? As long as I live at home, I have to follow their rules. Well, isn't that common sense? It just sounds like you were a brat. It's not that I was a brat. It's just that... Hispanic parents can be strict with their kids. They want the best for them. So why did you turn out, you know, how you are? How did I turn out? A loser. 
What? Take that back, I am not a loser. If anyone's a loser, it's you. Look at your hair, you don't even do it. I bet you can't even afford shampoo. Like, look at your dumb shirt. Like, what is this? Take commas or take como? Excuse me? Who do you think you are? Free kick, smash day. Oh, <laughs> awesome, I came just in time. Finally, man. Yeah, woo! Touchdown! How many points are we up by now? Touchdown? What do you mean, touchdown? Wait, why are you wearing that? You said we were gonna watch some football today, so I got a jersey. Yeah, I said we were watching football. That's not football, that's soccer. Take that back! It is football! Guys, relax! Just give me a minute! I'll handle this! Thanks for saving me. That was pretty scary. Seriously though, take it back! This is football! Okay, okay. That is football. So, what is this called then? That's football americano, or American football. I didn't realize calling it soccer was that serious. Chris, football is huge in Mexican culture. So you better put some respect on the name. All right, my bad. So, what team are you guys rooting for today? Well, the World Cup has officially started, so we're rooting for the only team that matters to us, Mexico. How fun! The World Cup is the event with the cool halftime shows, right? Uh, no. That would be the Super Bowl. Oh, so what's the World Cup then? It's an international football tournament that only happens every four years. Huh, so how did Mexico do in the last one? I was hoping you wouldn't ask. Oh, he flopped! He flopped! He flopped! That's not a penalty! No! Not a penal! No! No, no, not a penal! No, no, not a penal! No, not a penal! Wow, you're still hurt from something that happened four years ago? Yeah, I am. That pain will never go away. I'm telling you, most of us grew up watching football, so we take it pretty serious. Are you kidding me? How did you not make that? My abuela could have made that shot. See what I mean? Yeah, seems like he's pretty into it. If you think that's bad, you have to see how competitive we get with Chivas versus America, which is one of, if not the biggest football rivalries in Mexico. Hey, you don't support Chivas anymore, do you? What do you mean? Of course I do. <laughs> Must suck supporting the loser team. Says who? Chivas is way better than America. No, they're not. America is way better. Chivas. America. Chivas. America. Are you gonna stop that? Mm, nah. I'll let them figure it out. All right. Well, I guess we should get back to watching the game? Yeah, probably. Who's Mexico playing? Oh. It's their first game of the World Cup, so they're playing Germany. Ooh, I love Germany. It's a beautiful country. I guess I'll root for them. Um, Chris, you should probably run. How come? Oh, that's what you meant. I'll see you later. What's wrong with you? Don't you ever do that again! Kill a fly? No! Raise the chancla like that! You know Mexicans have PTSD when it comes to chanclas. Chanclas? Hispanic mothers? Does that ring a bell? I mean, I've seen you get hit before, but I didn't think you were that scared of them. Who isn't scared of them? Me? <sighs> you know what? Come with me and I'll show you exactly why I'll forever have nightmares about that. Thing. I thought you hated the chancla, not me. Look, you see that kid over there acting out of control and behaving like a mocoso? That's not gonna last because of two reasons. She's a Hispanic mother and she's wearing a chancla. That's pretty much why.
And that is the power of the chancla. Wow, that's incredible. And she doesn't even actually have to hit her. Oh, no, she still actually hits her with the chancla. But what's even worse is Hispanic moms have incredible aim and can hit you no matter where you are. Come on, I'm 23. Why can't I eat what I want? Okay, now that is pretty scary. So how do I avoid a chancla? <laughs> avoid? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> what? I'm serious. So why are we out here again? What was that for? Look, you can't avoid getting hit by a chancla, but you can get used to it. Take the pain! Yeah, I think you're ready. Okay, let's put your training to the test. Repeat this line so that his betting mother will get mad at you. Hey, Hispanic mother, I don't know. I don't care if there's frijoles at the house. I want McDonald's right now. Actually, now that I think about it, nothing really prepares you for a chancla. <sighs> Another day of hating my life. My name's Ramon, and once again, I'm still quarantined in a Mexican household. Please help me. Unfortunately, not much has changed. I'm still cleaning 50 times a day. But last month, I did feel a little sick, so as a precaution, I quarantined in my room. I thought I'd get some much needed rest, but my mom had other ideas. Oh, feels good to just lay down and rest. Why is she FaceTiming me? Quarantining in my room? But I'm supposed to rest. <sighs> okay, I'll start. I am! What are you gonna do, hit me through the phone? Oh, what was that? How'd you do that? And I'll do it again. Okay, I'll scrub harder. That was a rough two weeks. But once I was able to leave my room, I had a nice surprise waiting for me. More chores. One thing is doing chores, another thing is being excessive. This is excessive. Mom, no one mops outside. ¿Y qué? Nuestro patio va a ser más limpio de todos. Next thing you know, you're probably going to make me vacuum the grass. I just had to open my mouth, didn't I? One of the things I miss most from pre-quarantine is going out to eat. So recently, my dad tried to bring the dining experience to me. Okay, mijo, it's done. It's ready. Can I take the blindfold off now? I never said to wear one. And that's not a blindfold. Oh. Anyway, I know you've been wanting to eat out, so I made you your very own dining experience. Uh, it looks... Beautiful? I know, mijo. I worked very hard on it. Not the words I was thinking, but sure. Oh, yeah. Here's the menu. 
It just says frijoles over and over. Yeah, es que tu mama, she said not to waste the good food on you and, well, this is all you get, so, bon ti. Thank you, dad. Recently, my mom read online that phones are a major host for viruses and bacteria, so lately, she's been overly cautious. I like to pour a little bit of sauce on me. <laughs> Ramon, no uses el teléfono así. Why not? I already finished vacuuming the backyard. Eso no. No uses el teléfono sin una bolsa de plástico. Es mejor así. What is this going to do? Protegerte de la bacteria que está en el teléfono. De nada. How am I supposed to use my phone like this? Mijo, mi compadre me dijo que la bacteria se puede pasar por la bolsa de plástico también. Toma, pon tu teléfono aquí. Mom, don't you think you're overreacting just a little? Pues discúlpame. I'm overreacting because I want my family to be safe. Para de discutir y pon tu teléfono aquí. Okay. What is the container supposed to do anyway? Disinfect my phone? No, lo voy a tirar a la basura. You're going to what? Every day in quarantine gets tougher and tougher. I feel like I lost all hope. Wait, no. I'm confident I've lost all hope. Ramon, es tiempo de aspirar la llave de atrás otra vez. <sighs> Mom, why do I have to eat this? It's freaking summer. No me importa. I don't care if it's 103 degrees in this house. You're gonna eat that caldo. Niño malagradecido. My name is Anthony, I'm from Fontana, California, and I'm spending my summer in a Mexican household. If there's one thing I hate more than stale Takis, it's living here during the summer. It gets so hot in here, sometimes I feel like I'm living in the devil's butt crack. Ugh, I'm losing my mind right now. It's way too hot in here to function. Ugh, that's disgusting. I don't care what my mom says, I'm turning on the AC. Hey, 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 who said you could turn on the AC? Because I didn't. But it's really hot today, can I please turn it on? Ah, no exageres, it's not even that bad. Mom, look at yourself, you're drenched in sweat. Ah, it's not sweat, it's uh, it's perspiration. That literally means the same thing. Tu callate, I said no AC, so no AC. I, I just need like 32 seconds of AC, that's it. Do you have AC money? A ver. You still can't turn it on. I do not understand how my mom can withstand the heat. And don't even get me started on my dad. It's like the hotter it gets, the more things he wants to get done. Lord, what have I done to deserve this punishment? I file my taxes every single year. What more do you want from me? Ejole, mijo, are you doing that thing with the freezer again? No, dad, I'm just trying to cool down. Oh, thank goodness. I'm still scarred from last time. Anyway, mijo, I need your help. With what? I need you to help me fix our fans, build an extra room, and replace the foundation on the entire house. What? It is way too hot to be doing all of that. Okay, and? These things still need to be done. But dad, it's summer break. I'm supposed to be relaxing. Yes, okay, okay. I've been working since I was four years old. Do you know what I did for summer break? Let me guess, you work 30 hours a day. Actually, no. Your grandma took me to a beautiful water park. I had the time of my life, but it was after I did my chores and helped out my dad. Now it's your turn. Vamonos. Mm, if it gets any hotter, I'm gonna melt. Mijo, I know you always tell us about how hot it gets in the house, and well, I think I got a good idea. We could turn the AC on? No, I said good idea. Anyway, look what I got you, a mini fan. Mom, I'm pretty sure that two inch fan isn't gonna cool me down. Por que no? It's strong, mira. 
Huh? See? It feels so good. It's fine, Mom. I'll just continue suffering down here. Ah. <sighs> Wait. You know what? I have a better idea. Ah, uh, Yaves? I told you it was a good idea. As if the heat wasn't enough, my mom always has this great idea every summer to eat hot soup. Toma, tu favorito, caldo. Oh great, exactly what I wanted in this 110 degree weather. 120 degree soup. I cooked this all day, just for you. Thank you, mom. You shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. You know I do it because I love you. Andale. Try it! Uh, it's so delicious and refreshing. Ah, ya ves? I knew you would like it. That's why I got you seconds. What do you, what do you mean, seconds? Toma. Oh, wow. I'm the luckiest man in the world. It's hot. Y cuando terminen, me van a ayudar con los tamales. I'm telling you right now, this is the last time I'm coming over to your... Uh, Mrs. Garcia, do you have a bandage or something? A bandage for what? A ver. Nothing happened. Here, ponte vaporú. What am I supposed to do with this? You use it on the cut. This is vapor rub. This isn't going to do any... Shh. Don't let my mom hear you say that. In Mexican culture, vapor rub works on everything. Look at this poor, suffering child on her deathbed. <coughs> Why doesn't her mom just give her medicine? Uh, because her mom is Mexican, and Mexican moms believe that vaporu is the cure to everything, whether it's a cold, fever, smallpox, or heartbreak from a really bad breakup. Vapor rub is the cure to everything in Mexican culture. <coughs> Ay, pobrecita. Oh, with a little bit of Vicks, you'll feel better in no time. Does that actually do anything? Honestly, I'm not sure, but my mom used to give me vaporu when I was a kid and I'm still alive, so it must work. So, do you understand why my mom gave you vapor rub now, Chris? Yeah, kind of. I just don't think it works. Oh, you don't? Uh, no. All right. Well, I guess you won't mind if I stab myself then. Uh, whoa! What the heck, man? <coughs> I'm bleeding out, Chris. Well, yeah, you kind of just stabbed yourself. <coughs> That's besides the point. Chris, I need you to use the vaporu my mom gave you to stop the bleeding. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh. <coughs> <coughs> I, I think you stopped the bleeding. You see, Chris, vapor up cures everything. <laughs> That's amazing. Wait. This is fake blood. All right. I'll admit, it is fake blood, but did you really expect me to stab myself? And it doesn't change the fact that vapor rub really does work. Just when I thought you were right for once. Fine, more for me. So we didn't scare you enough the first time, huh? I ain't scared of nothing. Well, things are good for now. Yeah, they are, cause I'm back. My name is Anthony, but my street name is Ant. They brought me here before to try to scare me straight. And I ain't gonna lie, the Mexican mother scared me for a bit. But then I realized I'm a gangster and I ain't scared of nobody. Well, 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 look who we got back here. Guess we didn't scare you enough last time, huh, punk? My name's Lil Limp and I still got a little limp. I thought we scared this punk straight last time, but this time I'm gonna make sure he never comes back. Hopefully. So you think you a tough guy, huh? I'll show you tough. I fought a pit bull with my bare hands before. You really think you phased me? I fair enough, but it's not me who you should be scared of. Let me guess, you gonna bring the Mexican mom out again. <laughs> I ain't scared of her anymore. Nah, I got someone else this time, fool. Apa! Ya voy. 
Mi nombre es José, soy padre mexicano. Y si no me obedeces, pau pau. Who's that? That's your worst nightmare, ese. Soy un padre mexicano. Este niño mocoso, ¿qué se cree? I ain't scared of you. Crees muy, muy, ¿ah? ¿eh? A ver cómo te va cortando el sacate todo el día, sin agua. I bet your pretty hands couldn't handle that. A little work never hurt anyone. Oh, sí. But guess how I'm gonna wake you up? How you gonna wake me up? Asando chile. Yo hago mi propia salsa. Ooh, my eyes are burning just from the thought of that. Man, whatever. I can handle a little burn. Anyway, I like salsa with my chips. Oh, there ain't no salsa and chips in here, fool. No carne asada, o tortas, o chorizo con huevo, y no Wendy's tampoco. What? Wendy's, cabrón! He's talking about Wendy's. El 444. Oh. ¿Y qué crees? Cada domingo vamos a ir a misa a las 7 de la mañana. You ever been to church that early? It sucks, dog. Hey, más respeto, es misa. <coughs> oh, are you sick? Ay, pobrecito. There ain't no vaporo in here, dog. You're on your own. Man, I don't need vapor up. And I don't gotta listen to y'all. If I wasn't scared of a Mexican mom, what makes you think I'm gonna be scared of a Mexican dad? ¿Qué me estás diciendo? What are you gonna do? Hit me with the chancla? That didn't work the first time, dog. Hijo de tu madre. You just made the worst mistake of your life, Pese. What, what, are you, what are you doing? Vamos a ver qué hombrecito saliste. A ver, ahora sí me la vas a pagar. Y te la voy a cobrar. ¿Dónde vas? Oh, ahora flores con él. Mira, eh, mira. A ver qué se casa primero. A ver, ven. Hey, have you seen my puppy? When did you get a puppy? A couple months ago, but I don't know where I put him. Chris, are you kidding me? You lost the puppy? Oh well. Wait. What are those? <laughs> those are my huaraches. Whatever they are, they're not very cute. <sighs> do you want to get slapped or do you want to get slapped? Do I have a choice? Yeah, I gave you two options. You know what? I won't slap you. I'll just be the bigger person and just educate you instead. Oh, thank God. I thought you weren't gonna slap me. I changed my mind. Anyway, I'll still educate you. This is a huarache. It's a traditional Mexican sandal. That looks like an ancient Roman sandal. Well, they are pretty old. They date all the way back to pre-Columbian times. Is that a good thing? Yeah, because that means huaraches have lasted the test of time. And for good reason, these bad boys are handmade and usually consist of a rubber sole, oftentimes made out of used car tire. And the top of the sandal is made out of woven leather. Interesting. I don't think I've seen them at Foot Locker though. No, you won't find this at the store. You have to get them from the motherland, Mexico. Oh, and swap meets or flea markets usually sell them too. So is that what everyone in Mexico wears? No, they wear normal shoes also. This is just a type of sandal, but huaraches come in many different styles and colors. There's closed-toed ones and open-toed ones also. How cool! So there's a huarache for everyone. Yup, and they're pretty comfortable. Let me try them on. Sure. So, what do you think? Oh wow, these are pretty comfortable, and they feel pretty durable. Actually, do you mind if I take them out for a spin? What do you mean? I'll be back. Hey mister, those are some really cool shoes. Ramon, Ramon, now I know why you wear these. They're amazing, they're really comfortable, so I can wear them all day, and not gonna lie, the look's growing on me. They're pretty stylish. I told you, you should get some. Actually, can I have these? Why? I got a date wearing them, so I kinda need them. You were gone for like 21 seconds. I know, right? These shoes were good. 
Hey, are you ready? I'm waiting in the car. Wait, that's who you're going with? That's my cousin! She's the one who came up to me. Ramon, you can't blame me. Look at his huaraches. Well, I gotta go. I'll see you later. Thanks for the huaraches. Ramon, guess what? <sighs> Why did you wake me up? I was dreaming about Lotus right now. It's 2 p.m. and you're still in bed? Are you sick? Where's the Vaparu? No, I'm not sick. I'm just in my happy place right now. Your happy place is wrapped up in a blanket? This isn't just any blanket. This is a Mexican cobija. Oh yeah, those are the Mexican blankets with the random designs on it. I remember learning about that. Uh, not random designs, beautiful designs, like tigers, get it right. Okay, didn't realize you were that passionate about a blanket. Do you know how many harsh winters these blankets have gotten my family through? A lot, Chris. These blankets were woven by God himself. Okay, I get it, they're special. Can we go now? Go where? I'm not leaving my sanctuary. You said we were getting lunch today. Come on, I'm hungry. Dude, it's cold, so that means it's cobija season. And since it's cobija season, I'm never leaving my cobija. Come on, get up. It's a beautiful day outside. The sun is out, birds are chirping. Life is waiting for you. Well, you can tell life to wait. So you're gonna stay in bed all day doing nothing? Yup. So if you could excuse us, we have some laying down to do. What if I pay for your food and get you ice cream with sprinkles? You know what? I have an idea. <sighs> your ideas are never good. Like I said, your ideas are never good. What? I think this was my best idea yet. I get to be in my happy place and I still get lunch. And I get to pull you around. Exactly. Cool, let's go now. Tired. I want to go home now. Yeah, me too. I'm exhausted. You're exhausted? How are you ex- Okay then, whatever. Let's go home. I really appreciate you getting me out of the house though. This was a great idea, Chris. This was your idea. Is that what I think it is? I hope not. I'm out of here. Oh. Wait for me. Oh. 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 Ramon, what's going on with your mom? What do you mean? She was walking down the street with a suitcase. <gasps> Did you kick her out of the house? She's just testing out the suitcase for tonight. It's a Mexican New Year's tradition. Oh, so you guys travel for New Year's? No, Chris. It's believed that if you take empty suitcases for a walk on New Year's Eve at midnight, it'll bring more travels for the new year. Hmm. Esta maleta está perfecta para esta noche. So, Mrs. Lopez, where would you like to travel to in the new year? Mm, lo más lejos que pueda de Ramon. ¿Me ayudan con las uvas? Do you really mean that? Claro que sí. What are the grapes for? They're for another tradition. You're supposed to eat 12 grapes right before midnight, representing the months of the year. And it's supposed to bring happiness, peace, and good health. Eating grapes seems simple enough. Mmm, if you eat it like that, I'm pretty sure it brings bad luck instead. Me voy afuera a limpiar. Oh, I have something for you. This is disgusting. Relax, they're clean, I think. Anyway, this is also a Mexican New Year's tradition. Let me guess. New underwear means less bull. No, not at all. 
Wearing red underwear is supposed to bring you love in the new year, and yellow underwear is supposed to bring you money and happiness. Money? I'm definitely putting these on then. It's not a bad look on you, Chris. Not gonna lie, these traditions are pretty cool. I think I'm gonna try all of them tonight. There's a lot more actually. They say that cleaning the house before midnight is supposed to get rid of all the bad energy inside the house. Also, that throwing a bucket of water outside the window signifies out with the old and in with the new. That sounds like fun. Maybe I should practice the bucket one right now. What's there to practice? You just toss water out a window. There's not much to it. I just want to make sure I do it right. I don't think that's a good idea. Out with the old, in with the new. I don't think you're gonna make it to the new year. Mom, I'm sorry, it was an accident, I forgot. All I asked you to do is turn off the beans, que menso. Well, I'm gonna be dead when I get home. Your mom sounds scary. Yeah, and that's her being nice. <laughs> but she's right, you do need a Mentos. She called me menso, not Mentos. What's that? Mental is slang for dumb. Well, your mom's still right then. Speaking of slang, I was wondering, can you teach me more words, please? Why would I help you after you just called me dumb? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but I really need to learn new words. Why? Well, I was at the park yesterday. I was sitting on a park bench, eating a mazapan, when all of a sudden this beautiful Mexican girl approached me. Her face was a little hairy, but man was she beautiful. I was in awe. Wait, her face was hairy? Yeah. You didn't think that was weird? No, because I don't judge people like you. Anyway, like I was saying, she asked me, hey, is that Mexican candy? And I replied, of course, I consume only the finest things in life. I made her blush. Then she said, can I have some? And like the romantic guy I am, I ripped it in half and gave her a piece. And now we're hanging out on Friday. So I wanted to learn Mexican slang to impress her. Why would slang impress her? Cause it's romantic. I can assure you, slang is not romantic, but okay. So, can you teach me? Well, maybe he'll finally have someone else to hang out with besides me. What was that? Nothing. Yes, I can help you. One second. Okay, are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. When did you change? Whatever. First, what you learn is... Carnal. It's another way of saying bro or brother. You usually use it when you're talking to your close friends. So, you would call me Carnal and I would call you Carnal? Um, well, I said close friends. I'm just kidding. Yes, you're my Carnal. Next up is... Chido. Like, hot Cheeto? No. Chido. Chido. Oh, okay. <laughs> this word means cool. Like Duke de Richelieu is Chido? Excuse me? He's the guy who invented mayonnaise. Now he's Chido. I'm not sure why you would know that fact, but sure, I guess. Next is... Fresa. It literally means strawberry. But when used as slang, it's another way of saying snob or stuck up. Interesting. So it would be like saying, Ramon is Fressa. I'm not stuck up. Eh, debatable. Anyway, moving on. Hey, no texting in my class. It's her. She's asking if I'm down to hang out today. What do I say? Tell her yes. I can't just say yes. I have to tell her in a cool way. I got it. Text her this. A huevo? No. A huevo. A huevo. What does that mean? It's like saying for sure. Hmm. 
a huevo. I'll pick you up at seven. Cheeto, thanks for helping me out. Cheeto. I know, I said that. Menso. Menso? You're acting fresa right now. Que, que pedo, carnal? You know what? You actually do need a bentos. What? I'm just being honest. ¿Quién quiere jugar lotería? Oh, 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 I do, I do, I do. Who wants to help me build a shed? No. Again? Heck, mom better. Ah, cállate. Put your shoes on and come help me. Ahorita. But I'm only six years old. Oh, oh, my foot. Ay, Dios mío, oh, mío, oh, ¿qué te pasó? Oh, my goodness. Espérate, hold up. Sana, sana, colita de rana. It's okay, mijo. You're gonna be okay. Don't worry, my mom. It's okay. Oh, my goodness. Ruru. Ah, oh, oh, my toe, my toe. Ah, no pasa nada. Get up. Get up right now. Are you crying? Are you actually crying? I'll really give you something to cry about, huh? Get up. Ahorita. ¿Qué es esto? Thank you, mijo, for helping your mama make some tortillas, eh? You're very good, mira nomás. Yeah, very good. Ah, I'm so proud of you, mijo. Hey, what are you doing? Pay attention. I'm holding it. I need the knife right here, right here. You told me to hold it over Not here. here. Okay. Pay okay. attention. Okay. Are you on your phone? I'm holding it. Mi mijo, aquí, aquí. No, aquí no. Get closer. What are you doing? I'm Ay, holding mijo, it. Esto, madre, mira, Dad. Aquí. Whatever, mom. I'm going to do what I want. Te crees muy, muy okay. <laughs> Vamos a ver. Come here. Whatever, Dad. I'm gonna do what I want. Te crees muy muy okay. Vamos a ver. Come here. Oh. Oh my gosh. I knew it was Caliota the whole time. I knew it. Why would you do it again? <laughs> No quiero que tengas novia, mijito. You're too little. Eres mi bebecito. Hey, why don't you have a girlfriend yet? When I was your age, I was already married twice. Hey, mom, do you love me? Mi amor, of course I love you. Come here, mi amor. Why do you ask me? I love you so much. Look, everything here is because of you. We love you so much, me and your daddy. We love you so much. Trust me. Hey, dad. Do you love me? Do I love you? Mijo, you're expansive. You don't listen. You smell. Look at you. Why would I love you? Now, go take out the trash. I said take out the trash. Ahorita. Do you love me? Vete de aquí, I need my chivas. Mom, I'm hungry. Can we get McDonald's? Huh? No, hombre, ni que McDonald's, ni que nada, mijo. La casa de comida. Hay frijoles, tu favorito. Dad, I'm hungry. Can we get McDonald's? I'm hungry too. Okay, vámonos. Let's go get some McNuggies. Just don't tell your mom. Hey, hey, hey. ¿A dónde vas? Uh, I'm going to a party. ¿A fiesta? No, 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 no. I saw, I saw the noticias. And on Facebook, and my commander told me that two to three kids are dying every party. No, 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 you can't go, mijo. No, 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 no. Hey, ¿a dónde vas? Uh, I'm going to a party. Okay, have fun, mijo. Hey, mom, is it cool if I go to the movies with Andrew? Um, pregunta tu papá, mijo. Okay. Hey, dad, is it cool if I go to the movies with Andrew? Ask your mom. I just did. She told me to ask you. Well, ask her again. Mom, can I go to the movies with Andrew? Mijo, te dije que le preguntes a your dad. I did, and then he told me to ask you. No, 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 pregunta a your dad. Can I go to the movies with Andrew? Do you not listen? I said, ask your mom. Ask your dad. Ask your mom. Ask your dad. Ask your mom. Ask your dad. I said, ask your mom. Ask your dad. Mira, ask your mom. Ask your dad. What is up, guys? Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a like because it helps us a lot. And let us know in the comments down below if you're team mom or team dad. Or just comment down below something could we read every single one of you guys' comments. And also, guys, make sure you check out the video we did on Chewie's page. Link will be in the bio 
It's a dope video. It's funny. So go check it out right now. And uh, what do you want to tell them, Chewy? Check out that next video. It's 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 gonna be hilarious. And yes. this is this one. Hopefully, we get to do another one soon. And, and if you guys liked it, please mm -hmm. comment below. Say another one. And you know what? It might just work. Yeah. Doing that right now, guys. And uh, with all that being said, click right here to check out behind the scenes. Click right here if you aren't subscribed yet. And with all that being said, we'll see you guys next time. What? Hey, if you guys are still watching right now, <laughs> comment down below. In the wild, surviving the heat is not for the weak. But there is one species that not only endures the heat, but also thrives in it, the Palotero. This creature is not only beautiful, but also one of the strongest mammals in the wild, much like the mighty dung beetle who can push up to a thousand times their own body weight, the Palotero pushes a cart that is several times heavier than him. But what is the Palotero pushing, you ask? As we get a closer look, we can see that he is carrying around water and milk based frozen bars, also known as paletas. The paletero pushes these paletas for miles under the scorching sun. The journey is long and treacherous, but the paletero is up for the task. This creature is the definition of resilience. And similar to the songs made by the black cap chickadee, the Palotero also has a song that lets other mammals know he is close. Paletas! Paletas! Upon hearing this song, a homo sapien will leave his burrow in order to track down the Palotero. To the homo sapiens, these frozen treats act like an oasis in this unforgiving environment. It appears the Palotero hears something in the distance. The sound of a predator. Raspados! Raspados! It seems an Elotero has enroached on his territory. Similar to the Palotero, the Elotero is a strong and beautiful creature. A creature that possesses a refreshing treat that is also loved by many mammals called raspados. The homo sapien now has another option to cool down with and must make a choice. The paleta or the raspado. Unfortunately for the palatero, it looks like the homo sapien has made his choice. The palatero must react quickly if he wants to win him back. Niño. The Palotero has something that the Elotero does not. The highly coveted SpongeBob SquarePants Popsicle Bar. Realizing he has lost this battle, the Elotero retreats back to his shelter. The Palotero is overjoyed that he has won. And now that the Homo sapien has cooled down, it is time for him to continue his voyage. And off he goes. Under the beating sun, the Palotero continues his journey. A journey of spreading joy throughout the animal kingdom. Okay, Mom, we're going out now. We probably won't be back until tonight. Está bien, vete. Pero te va a agarrar la llorona. Actually, we're not going anywhere. Nope, we'll just stay inside and do nothing. Yeah, that sounds fun. Wait, 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 wait. Why aren't we going out anymore? Did you not hear her? She said que nos va a agarrar la llorona. Do you not understand or something? Wait, hold on. What does that even mean? Can you explain to me why you're panicking and what exactly Tavalorona means? Te va. Te va? Agarrar. Agra? La llorona. Uh, what you said. So, what does that mean? It means the crying woman is going to get you. And that woman is... La Llorona! So this La Llorona woman is trying to get you and you're scared for what reason? I mean, you're pretty big. I don't think she can get very far with you. Legend has it that a woman caught her husband cheating and as revenge, she drowned her own children. She later realized the huge mistake she made, so she also drowned 
herself. And as punishment, God forced her to wander the earth to find her children. But since her children are in heaven, she goes around kidnapping other people's kids. So if you ever hear her say, Me Seahawks, you better run. Damn, your mom was right. You are insane. Look, I'm not gonna let some fake folklore prevent me from going out. You can stay here and be scared for no reason, but I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my day. I tried my best. Ooh, me see house. So dumb. How can anyone fall for that? <laughs> oh, hell no. Ha! Maybe next time he'll actually listen to me. Ramon, guess what? Cállate, que estoy viendo mi novela. You can't just barge into my house like that, especially when my abuela's watching her novella. You're just asking for death. I just wanted to tell you some good news. Okay, what is it? It better be good. I got a new chapstick. Oh, cool. Can I see it? <laughs> Why would you interrupt my grandma's novella? For that! I just wanted to tell you the good news. Anyway, why are you and your grandma so upset? Chris, watching telenovelas, or novelas for short, is a very important pastime for Hispanic mothers and grandmothers, and you should never interrupt them. If you go to a Hispanic household, 10 out of 9 times there's a TV on with a novella playing. What's so special about novellas? They look like any other show. Oh, no. Novellas are definitely not like any other show. It's Kind of hard to explain, but they pretty much just overdramatize everything. Actually, I have an idea. Instead of me explaining to you how novellas are different than other shows, we could just film our own so you can see for yourself. Here it is, Chris, our very own novella. Yeah, let's just watch it. <clears throat> Mi amor, he llegado. Mi vida. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Mi vida. Jose Carlos. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> Mi. Mi amor, yo sé quién hizo esto. Mis, mis tías. Sí, yo lo hice, pero no soy tu tía. Soy tu mamá. ¿Mamá? Sí, es tu mamá, pero yo soy em embarazada. Embarazada. No, gaviota. That was pretty terrible. Uh huh. But at least I understand what you mean about telenovelas being overdramatic. That's good. I'm glad. But let's never bring this up again. I agree. From the top, make it drop. That's a wet. That's a wet. Hijo de tu madre, ¿qué andas haciendo? Mom, it's, it's not what it looks like. Ven pa' acá. No, please, no, mom, not again. No. My name is Anthony, and I'm a TikToker living in a Mexican household. I've been making TikToks for a while now, and it's part of my life. But my mom just doesn't understand it. It's only right that you should play. No, mom, I'm making a TikTok. TikTok? Yo vi en la tele que es el diablo. Just because you saw something on TV doesn't mean it's true. Esto es lo que el diablo quiere que pienses. Esto para ahorita. Jamás quiero ir TikTok en mi casa. Ay, Dios mío, por favor, quítale esos malos juicios. I work really hard on my TikTok dances, and I would say I'm better than Charlie. 
but it's hard to be the best when you get interrupted all the time. Get a bucket and a mop, that's a wet day. Mom, you messed up my TikTok. I had it that time. Dijiste que querías cubete trapeador. Aquí está. I didn't actually want it. I'm doing the WAP. Instead of doing the WAP, start to mop. <sighs> Why can't I just make TikToks in peace? Yo sé que TikTok es el diablo. Y déjales digo, el diablo no va a estar en mi casa un día más. <sighs> See, I told you he's being controlled by it. Uh, mom, who is this? This is Father Guzman. He's here to help us. With what? With you. Hello, son. I'm told you've been interacting with the devil, and I'm here to help you. I've performed exorcisms before. Exorcisms? I'm fine. My mom's just exaggerating. I'm literally just on TikTok. See? TikTok, that's the devil inside him. I can sense it also. We must act fast. Hold him. What do you mean grab him? Mom, stop! Demon, release yourself now! What are you guys Free doing? Get away from your shackles at once! Leave now! Please stop, I'm not possessed! That's what you want us to think, demon, but not on my watch! Leave now, TikTok demon! You are not welcome here! Free my this My mom boy. can be Free. overprotective at times, and I know that means that she cares. I just think she cares a little too much. M to the V, M to the V, M, 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 M to the B, boom, boom, boom. Mijo, ¿te lastimaste? No, mom, I'm just filming a TikTok. No, tu cuello está torcido. Toma. My neck is fine. I don't need that. All those neck movements are going to make you paralyzed. I'm pretty sure making a TikTok isn't going to make me paralyzed. No me contestes. No sabes ni de lo que estás hablando. Toma. I was just bobbing my head. As long as I live in a Mexican household, I'm never going to be able to make TikToks in peace. Oh, hey Chris. Oh, wait, you're trying to learn Spanish. Hola. <gasps> Isn't that a bad word? How do you not know what hola means? Everyone knows what hola means. I haven't gotten that far in my Spanish lesson yet. I can see. Anyway, what are you up to? It's my little cousin's birthday party today, so I'm setting up the piñata. Ooh, how fun! Can I get a chance to hit it later? But it's for the kids. Uh, sure, I guess. Yay! I have never seen a grown man that excited to hit a piñata. Uh, I, I was just joking. <laughs> uh, let's pretend that never happened. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You know, if you think about it, the whole concept of hitting an object and candy coming out is pretty random. I mean, if you know the history behind piñatas, it's not that weird at all. I can explain it to you if you want. You know, I'm starting to think you get some sort of pleasure from explaining every little thing to me. Just a little. Anyway, although piñatas are extremely popular in Hispanic culture, many people believe that the tradition originated in China. From China? I've never heard that before. Yeah, the Chinese would create these clay pots in the shapes of various animals like cows and buffaloes, then cover the pots with colored paper like a piñata. But instead of filling it up with candy, they would fill it up with seeds. Seeds do not sound nearly as fun as candy. Wait, so how did the tradition end up in Mexico then? Well, eventually, missionaries made it over to New Spain, or what is now known as Mexico and Central America. And when the missionaries got there, they realized that the Aztecs and Mayans had something similar to piñatas also. So they used the tradition that the indigenous could relate to to convert them to Christianity. Wait, so you're telling me a paper mache object filled with candy has religious meaning to it? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. This is the traditional shape of a piñata, and the seven points on the piñata represent the seven deadly sins, and the candy that goes inside of it represents the temptations of wealth and earthly pleasures. And the blindfold you put on is the blind faith you're supposed to have in God. And lastly, hitting the piñata signifies goodness and virtue, battling evil. Wow, who would have known hitting paper mache had such a deep meaning? Also, thank you for reminding me why I hate history class so much. It's super boring. What was that for? History isn't boring, it's just not fun. That literally means the same thing. Oh, yeah. Anyway, did you still want to hit the piñata? 
uh, oh, no, I, I was just kidding about hitting it. I I'd rather, like, go play video games or, uh, <laughs> do something cool. <laughs> okay, I do want to hit it. Wait, don't forget your blindfold. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, you're weird. All right, you're good to go. Dale, dale, dale. No pierdas el tino. Wait, porque si lo... why are you singing a song? It's a traditional song we sing when someone's hitting the piñata. Oh, okay. Dale, dale, dale. No pierdas el tino. Porque si lo pierdes, pierdes el camino. I, I got you now, dumb piñata. Okay, okay. I think you're good now. Stupid piñata. I hate you so much. Much. Uh, Chris? Why did you have to leave me when I was a kid? <laughs> Chris! What? You're not even hitting the piñata. Oh. Oops. And, um, I think you should probably see a therapist. This is Mexican Jeopardy! Hey everyone, welcome back to Mexican Jeopardy. I'm your host, Anthony, or Bill for short, and I'm here with our three contestants. English professor from Harvard University, James Davis. World-renowned brain surgeon, Marvin Jones. And lastly, with only his childhood experiences at his disposal, Ramon Guzman. Ramon, you can start. Um, let me get weapons for 200, please. One in four children are traumatized by this. What is a lack of a stable household? What are chanclas? Excuse me, but how is chanclas the correct answer? Chanclas have been scientifically proven to be one of the most terrifying things in modern history. Your turn, Ramon. Can I get nightmares for 400, please? The blank? is going to get you. What is La Llorona? But that question's a little vague, don't you think? Technically, anyone can get you. <laughs> Moving on. Ramon? Family for 400, please. This phrase is commonly said at family parties. What is Y tu novio? Health remedies for $600, please. This is a common life-saving procedure. What is CPR? What is sana sana colita de rana? What is that? It means heel heel tail of the frog. That doesn't make sense. Saying something isn't gonna save a life. <sighs> uh, but you're wrong, Marvin. It will. Nightmares for $800, please. Your mom is coming home and you forgot to blank. What is do the dishes? That was a good answer, Ramon, but no, we were looking for what is turn off the beans. Ah, uh, well, that was my second guess. All right, James, your turn. I would like lies for 400, please. This is the biggest lie known to mankind. What is a butter container in a Mexican household? I'm sorry, what? Everyone knows that there's never any butter in a butter container. It's either frijoles, salsa, or caldo de res. Can I get weapons for 400, please? An action known to cause people to cry, cough, and run away. What is tear gassing? What is asando el chile? I have never heard of that in my life. Then consider yourself lucky. Not many people come out alive. Rest in peace, Pedro. Anyway, health remedies for $800, please. This is believed to cure everything from a cough to a broken heart. What is a doctor? What is Vaporu? Is there scientific backing to support that claim? No, there isn't. Anyway, Ramon, you're doing great. Uh, we have time for one more before commercial break. Ramon, you're up. Let me get family for 800, please. The average amount of cousins a person of Mexican descent has. What is the limit does not exist? <laughs> 
Ramon, guess what day it is? Um, Saturday? No, like, guess what holiday it is? Oh, National Slap Your Friend Day. That's a holiday? No, but it will be if you keep wasting my time. Okay, okay, well, it's Mexican Independence Day! Happy Cinco de Mayo! I knew this day was coming. Today isn't Mexican Independence Day. What do you mean? Uh, it's Cinco de Mayo, of course it is. Chris, sit down. Okay. What is this? It's a presentation I created for this specific moment called Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day. Wait, so did you know I was gonna come here and say that? Well, you know nothing about Mexican culture, so I figured this day will come eventually. For your information, I used to watch Dora the Explorer, so I do know Mexican culture. Thank you very much. Okay, maybe I don't know that much. It's fine. I'm just glad you didn't think Cinco de Mayo had something to do with, like, mayonnaise or something. Yeah, that would have been bad. Uh, so, if Cinco de Mayo is not about Mexican Independence Day, is it a made-up holiday? No. It's a real holiday. But, it's a celebration of something totally different called... Batalla de Puebla. On May 5th, 1862, Mexico defeated the French Empire in a battle in the town of Puebla. Since the Mexican army was vastly outnumbered, this victory became a symbol of Mexican resistance. And that's how the celebration of Cinco de Mayo came to be. Wait, so if Cinco de Mayo is about that battle, when is Mexican Independence Day? September 16th. Do you have a poster for all my questions? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Well, since Cinco de Mayo is about the Battle of Puebla, shouldn't you still be celebrating it then? Yes and no. No one really celebrates Cinco de Mayo in Mexican culture besides the people in the state of Puebla. So it's more popular in the United States? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, Americans pretty much use it as an excuse to party and drink. Does that mean we're being culturally insensitive by doing that? Nah, we don't really mind. And anyway, I enjoy those half-off tequila shots also. Oh, thank goodness. Well, thanks for the crash course on Cinco de Mayo. Now should we go celebrate the Battle of Puebla? Yeah, sure. But you're not gonna drink, are you? I thought you said drinking wasn't culturally insensitive. It's not. You just get extremely annoying when you get drunk. Remember what happened last time you got drunk? You stole a dog. Yeah, you're not drinking. Come on, that dog was cute. Anyone would have kidnapped him. What does salsa in a butter container, pots and pans in the oven, and a sewing kit inside a cookie tin have in common? They all have things that are not where they belong. Someone had to put them there. Hi, I'm household investigator Anthony Chorizo, and this is my case examination on the misplaced items in Hispanic households. For years, Hispanics have grown to accept these occurrences as a normal part of their lives, but no one has ever stopped to think who is the one responsible for these actions. I'm going to be focusing my efforts on the Sanchez residence. Four people live here. Ramon Sanchez is the definition of lazy. But could he be the one responsible for these Mexican life hacks? Then there's Ramon's mom, Maria, a possible suspect. But why would a mother put her family through these struggles? It doesn't seem likely. There's also Ramon's younger brother, Chewy. He is full of energy and outgoing, but can also be mysterious. The last suspect is Blake Anderson. He rents a room in the house and has no family relation to Ramon. He is said to be respectable and clean, but maybe that's a front, and he's secretly moving things around. So, Blake, how long have you been living here? Uh, about a year. And how is your relationship with the Sanchez family? Well, I think they like me a lot. The mom even has a nickname for me, El Tonto. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna show you something, and I want you to tell me what you think is inside. Okay. Cookies? Hmm. Okay. What about this? 
It's a butter container with butter inside. Interesting. And out of curiosity, where do you think pots and pans belong? On a pot rack? I'm sorry, what? Pot rack, the thing where you hang your pots and pans? So you don't put them in the oven? No, I would never do that. Blake's belief in this mystical pot rack leads me to believe he cannot be a suspect. Pot racks are real, that's where you're supposed to hang them. Blake's strange beliefs removes him from my suspect list. That means I'm going to have to get the truth out of little Chewy. Hi Chewy, do you mind answering some questions for me? Okay, it was me who gave the kid a wet wheelie for 47 minutes, but he asked for it. No, not about that. Do you know anything about the pots in the oven or the sewing kit in the cookie tin? No, can I go now? The interview isn't over. If you don't let me leave right now, I'm gonna scream loud. One, two, three. Okay, okay, you can go. <sighs> Thank you for your help. Someone had to know something, but who? I felt stuck, so I decided I needed to spy on the Sanchez family. I set up hidden cameras in their kitchen. The footage I recorded will shock you. Ramon can be seen entering the kitchen around 2.30 a.m. for his third midnight snack. It seems he's preparing toast, nothing too unusual. But watch what happens next. How did Ramon know that specific container had butter and not salsa? I needed to confront Ramon about this and see what he had to say. Ramon, can you explain this photo? It's a photo of you. Sorry, uh, wrong photo. Explain this one. It's me in the kitchen. Wait, did you set up hidden cameras in our house? Yes, I did, but strictly for investigative purposes. Yeah, investigative purposes. So how did you know that butter container actually had butter? I didn't. I just got lucky, I guess. That didn't seem like luck. It appeared you had inside knowledge because perhaps you're the one behind it all. Look, man, it's not me. I hate these Mexican life hacks. Do you know how annoying it is opening butter containers and finding salsa, frijoles, and everything besides butter? And when I actually have to use the oven, I have to empty out the pots and pans? And don't get me started on the sewing kit. That's the reason why I have trust issues. Is Ramon telling the truth? Yes. Could he be the perpetrator? I I'm not. I'm not literally asking you, I'm asking the audience. What audience? No one watches you. Was I missing something? I felt further from the truth than ever before. But what if the answer was closer than I thought? What if this whole time I was searching for myself? Maybe I was the one behind all this. Nah, <laughs> I don't even live there, so it couldn't be me. But who is it? Ramon has no motive. Blake isn't Hispanic, and Chewy, well, Chewy is a brat. But what are all these people connected to? That's right, they're all made up of 65% water. And who lives in water? Patrick Starr. And Patrick Starr looks like Ramon's mom. If anyone can help me figure out who the suspect is, it's her. Before we begin, I just want to assure you that you are not a suspect, but I'm positive that you can help me out. Okay. Have you noticed any strange activities around the house like pots in the oven, salsa in a butter container, or a sewing kit in a cookie tin? Yes. Do you have any idea who's behind all that? It's me. What? I did all those things. Why would you do that? Pa que tirarlos si puedo usarlos. And what about the oven? Why do you place the pots and pans in there? Ahí es donde van. Have you heard of a pot rack? No. What is that? Maria's ignorance on pot racks confirms that she is indeed the mastermind behind these horrific crimes. The perpetrator wasn't a convict or a hoodlum. In fact, it was none other than a Hispanic mother. What does this mean for the landscape of society and what can we do to prevent these actions? To put it simply, nothing. This is their world and we're just living in it. My name is Anthony Chorizo and this concludes my investigation. What you here for, dog? 
Look at me when I talk to you. Come here with the attitude to eat you for life, you see? They call me little limp because I have a little limp. And today, I'm going to make sure this punk never wants to go to prison. Man, we have a field day with someone like you in here. You really think you can defend yourself with someone my size? Yeah, if I had to. I ain't scared of you. Oh, you a tough guy, huh? Let's see how tough you are with the OG then. Amma. Yeah, boy! Me llamo Lupe. Soy madre y nada da más miedo que yo. Why would I be scared of her? Because soy una madre mexicana. You ain't so tough now, huh? Si te sigues portando mal, la llorona te va a agarrar. La llorona's the second scariest woman, Holmes. Who's first? Las madres mexicanas. If you hear that llorona cry, mis hijos, it's over for you, ese. I even got the scar from her. I don't see anything. Because it's a mental scar, fool. You can't see my pain and fear, but it's there. Man, y'all just exaggerating. I'm not scared. Ah, con que muy machito, verdad? A ver si aguantas el caldo en el verano. Oh, that's the worst, dog. I'm telling you, you don't want this life. ¿Qué tal con el cucuy? ¿Puedes con él? ¿O con la cuchara de madera? ¿O con el cinto? You keep acting how you do? Prince is going to be the last of your worries, fool. She's who you should really be scared of. Man, whatever. I ain't scared of you, and I definitely ain't scared of her. Okay. That's fine. I'll see you on the other side then, Nessie. Wait, what is she gonna do with that? This is what happens when people like you act up. They feel the wrath of la chancla. Okay, okay, I, I won't be bad anymore. I, I promise. Ya es muy tarde. Since the Scared Straight program, my life has changed for the better. I no longer engage in the same activities that I used to, and I definitely feel like I've matured. Is that thanks to Little Limp and his scare tactics? Oh no, he didn't scare me at all. It was the chunkla that scared me straight. Hey mijo, ayúdame! I have a lot of camping stuff in the car. Make yourself useful! Dad, I told you not to bring anything. I rented an RV. Okay. And it has everything we need. A ver. Qué bonito. Está maciza. And it even has an awning? Okay. Wait until you see the inside. Oh, mira nomás. This is cool. Like your papa. Whatever you say, Dad. But yeah, it is cool. Take a look around. Good material. Cabinets from my hot sauces, a fridge from my apple juice, and a stove tambien. I got a good idea for that. Your favorite meal, mijo? Chorizo con huevos. Thanks, Dad. But uh, you know it's just the two of us, right? That's a lot of food. ¿Y qué? You're a growing boy. You need to eat a lot. I'm pretty sure I'm done growing. How come? You're only 12, mijo. You still have time. Wait, do you really think I'm 12? Uh, uh. Your food is getting cold. Hurry up and eat. Toma, I made the tortillas too. Are you ready for the hike? Is he sleeping? Dad, wake up. I'm up, I'm up. Uh, I was just uh, testing the bed. It's good, 10 out of 10. Vámonos. do we have? My legs are about to give out. We've only been hiking for five minutes. Ah, well, I'm tired already. I need a break. This is going to take longer than I thought. That was a beautiful hike. I feel good. My legs are so sore. But thank you for setting this up. This RV was a great idea and well, you never have good ideas, so I'm impressed. Thanks, I guess. Oye, mijo, I do gotta tell you something. I hope you don't get mad, but 
I forgot the marshmallows at home. Please don't hate me. It was an accident. It's fine, Dad. Marshmallows aren't that serious. Oh, thank goodness. It's been bothering me this whole trip. Oh, but since you're being honest right now, do you know how old I am? Uh, see? Of course I do. Uh, I'm gonna go check out the river. But there's no rivers around here. To survive in the wild, one must be tough, fearless, and have the ability to adapt. One of the few mammals that possesses those traits is none other than the Hispanic father. Much like the honeybees who work up to 12 hours a day tending to their honeycombs, the Hispanic father also works a long and tedious day. He is truly one of the hardest workers in the animal kingdom. Hey dad. Well, let me hold. Oh, um, is it cool if I go out with some friends tonight? Similar to the mighty lion of Africa, the father leaves the majority of the parenting to the mother. <sighs> Pregunta a tu mamá. I did already. Sh she said yes. Okay, pues sí. Much like a koala who lays itself in a tree to relax, the Hispanic father settles into his usual resting position as he engages in his favorite pastime activity, watching soccer. The array of color and light released by the television causes his eyes to spark in excitement like a chameleon. Similar to the howl of a coyote, the Hispanic father also has his own battle cry. Goal, 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 golazo! Hola viejo, ¿cómo te fue? Hola vieja. Oye, can you tell Anthony to take out the trash before he leaves? ¿A dónde va? He told me he asked you already. The dopamine levels of the father quickly diminishes as he realizes his own offspring has betrayed him. Okay, pues. He wants to lie to me? Vamos a ver! Like a Spanish fighting bull, he quickly charges towards his prey, and without hesitation, he pounds on his offspring's den. Mijo, open up! Why? A am I in trouble? No, 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 no. You're not in trouble, mijito. Don't worry. He begins to unravel a mechanism from his waist known as El Cinto. For most mammals, this tool is harmless, but in the hands of a Hispanic father, it becomes a weapon. I just want to talk. Okay. Did you lie to me? No. Are you sure? Yes, I I'm sure. Okay, pues. You want to keep on lying? Pues síguele! Like the stinger from a scorpion, El Cinto possesses a quick and lethal strike. And the offspring is all too familiar with what is about to occur. He has no choice but to accept his fate. Ramon! No le pegues, eh? Te pasas. Pero me echó mentiras. Lo vamos a castigar, okay? Pero no le pegues. It seems as though his companion does not approve of his actions. Te dije que bajaras el cinto. The Hispanic father knows he is no match for her and puts his weapon down. The offspring is relieved to know he will live to see another day. Much like in Bonobo society, it's the female that rules the land and this female alpha has asserted her dominance. Why did you stop? It, it was getting good. How much did you hear? Um, pretty much everything. Oh. What are you practicing for? It's Matias' birthday, so I'm just brushing up on the lyrics. Oh, how nice! Is that her favorite song or something? No. It's just a song we sing when it's someone's birthday. In that case, you have the lyrics completely wrong. What do you mean? Well, I've experienced a lot of birthdays in my life, 
And I'm pretty sure the song goes, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I'm not trying to sing that. I'm singing Las Mañanitas. Las Manitas? No, that means little hands. Mañanitas, Chris. Yeah, what you said. So what does that mean? Las Mañanitas is a traditional Mexican birthday song. You sing that instead of the birthday song? No, we typically sing both, but Las Mañanitas is a song that's supposed to be sung early in the morning to awaken the birthday person. That sounds terrible. Who wants to be woken up early on their birthday to people singing to them? Well, the lyrics are thoughtful and beautiful, and sometimes people even hire mariachis to perform the song, so you can't really be mad at that. Oh, but if you're supposed to sing it in the morning, why are you getting ready to sing it now? I mean, you're supposed to sing it in the morning, but a lot of people actually like to sing it when you're giving the cake to someone. I see. Well, good luck then. Actually, since you're here now, you can help sing also. Oh, no, I'm okay. I don't even know the lyrics. Ooh, we should probably head out now. We don't want to miss it. Perfect. I think we made it just in time. Okay, is everyone ready? I don't know this song. That was beautiful. Orale! They made it to the finals! What? Wait, what does that mean? It means they made it to the championship. No, not that. I'm talking about that Oreo word. Oreo? <laughs> no manches! Whoa, 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 you can't be saying stuff like that. It's 2019, man. No manches isn't a bad word. It's Mexican slang. Honestly, I don't know how you made it this far in life without knowing anything about Mexican culture. Okay, Chris, today I'll be teaching you some Mexican slang. First of all, what do you know? Ooh, I know guay. You know what? Guay. I see people say it on Facebook all the time. Do you mean this word? Oh yeah, that one. I should smack you with this stick. It's pronounced way, not gway. Oh. Anyway, this is pretty much another word for dude. So like, what up way? Um, sure. Next word, no manches. This is a very common thing, and it's another way of saying no way. No manches, no manches. Next, que pedo. Literally translates to what fart. Why would you want to say what fart? Well, that's what it translates to, but it's just an informal way of saying what's up. But never say that phrase or any Mexican slang really to a Mexican mom or anyone that isn't your friend because you'll probably get smacked. Moving on. Ooh, ooh, I know that word. It means water. No, Chris. I mean, technically yes, but no. Aguas is just a slang term for be careful or watch out. These are only a couple of the slang words in Mexican culture, but trust me, there's a lot more, but they start to get very vulgar. Hey, mijos, what are you guys up to? Oh, hey, Mrs. Garcia. Ramon's just teaching me some Mexican slang. Oh, let me try using what I learned. Uh, no, 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 that's probably not a good idea. Que pedo, eh? No manches. Aguas. I told you not to use slang around Mexican moms, and now look at you. You got smacked. Ay, Dios mío, let's go. I don't want to be late. Mom, late for what? Hi, for our flight. It was very expensive, and I am not going to miss it. Our flight is even for another three days. I don't care. We can wait at the airport. Either you're going, or you're staying. My name is Anthony, and I'm going on vacation with my Mexican family. Going on vacation in a Mexican house is never easy. And one thing about my family is that we never agree on anything, especially when it comes to vacations. Ooh, check this out. 
they have a giant water park with 30 different water slides and 17 pools. This looks awesome. Oh, mijo, you know I'm scared of water slides, but it does look fun. And you can even ride jet skis inside the pool. Well, how much does it cost? Oh, it's just $150 per person. Is that local? We are definitely not going there. Mira, there's other options. We can walk on the sidewalk, we can go window shopping, and I bet they got pretty little trees that we can sit under. <laughs> that doesn't sound fun at all. Ah, sure it is. One, it's fun, and two, it's cheap, mijo, just the way I like things. <laughs> but we could do all those activities here. A vacation is supposed to be, I don't know, different. It is in a different place. So technically, it's different. <laughs> ¿Qué pasó? Did you figure out what we're doing for vacation? Not really. Dad just wants to walk around because it's free. Ooh, now that's a great idea. Sightseeing is my favorite. Can we please actually go do something? You know, be like tourists. Do you have tourist money? Eh? Okay, okay. I read online that there's a museum of lemonade and it's only $5 a person. Oh, great idea. Another fun and cheap alternative. And I do love lemonade, so that's a plus. Looks like you guys will have a great time. One of the most important things about vacations is budgeting, but my parents aren't really that great at it. Wow. Hey dad, a uh, quick question. Uh, wait, are you watching ASMR videos? Yes, they help me relax. ¿Qué quieres? Um, I was just wondering, since the vacation is coming up, what is our budget? Oh, that's a great question, mijo. I don't even know, but let's check. Ugh. Why do you have all these papers under there? Everything that's important, I keep under our bed. Mira, I got birth certificates, except yours. I got the will, I got marriage certificates, passports. I got todo. Wait, is that the basketball card I lost eight years ago? Uh. No, it's not. Dad, I just saw you pick it up and put it in your pocket. Ah, you're delusional, mijo. Anyway, I also keep our monthly budget here. You keep track of our family finances under a mattress? No wonder you're always stressed. It works for me, okay? Kind of. Well, for our vacation, the budget is, uh, $60. For seven days? That can't be right. Let me check it out. It's blank. Okay, maybe because I haven't figured it out yet. Wait, is that my birthday money from the past 10 years? No, you didn't see anything. <laughs> no, I'm snitching. Another important thing that needs to be done for vacations is packing. And I don't know how they do it, but Mexican moms can fit anything into a suitcase. <laughs> Mijo, where's that scale I asked for? Sorry it took so long, mom. I wanted to see how much weight I would lose after going to the bathroom, and turns out I lost five pounds. <laughs> So how heavy can the suitcases be? They can't weigh more than 50 pounds each. Okay, go ahead and weigh it. Why is it so heavy? Hi, mijo. You need to exercise more. 120 pounds. Mom, what do you have in here? Pues, just the stuff we need. Why are you taking tortillas, your homemade salsa, and dumbbells? Well, I don't know if they're gonna have good salsa over there, and the dumbbells I need for my workouts. Since when do you work out? I since yesterday? I don't need to explain myself. Now, put my stuff back how I had it. What about the extra weight? Ah, that's why I'm working out. Don't be rude. No, mom, I'm talking about the suitcases. And 
Why is that one covered in saran wrap? Hi, it's called fashion. I don't know why, but when we go on vacation, my parents always want to go to the airport extremely early. Ya levantate, <clears throat> it's time to leave. <clears throat> Right now? Yes, get up right now, because if I leave, you're just gonna stay there sleeping. Okay, okay, but I need to pack still. You still haven't done it? I told you to pack yesterday. Wait, why are we leaving now? The flight isn't for another three days. Ha, ah, because we need to go to the airport. I'm not missing our flight. We live 10 minutes from the airport. I'm pretty sure we'll get there in time. No, we need to leave now. Hurry up and get your things. But mom, that's- No, but mom. Do it and let's go or else we're leaving without you. <sighs> what are we gonna do at the airport for three days? Hey, are you ready to go? Your mom isn't kidding, eh? She'll really leave you. Trust me, I know firsthand. <laughs> I'm gonna get ready right now. I don't understand why we're leaving so early though. It's dumb. Mijo, you need to be more understanding of your mom. This is a big trip for all of us and she just wants everything to go smoothly. You know, we didn't always have the means to travel. What do you mean? We worked hard to make this happen. We saved up to make sure everyone has a good time. It's a privilege to travel, mijo. And we're just happy that we get to do it with you. You remember that one time I missed your game, right? Well, I was working overtime to fund this trip. And and your mom, she was selling things online that also helped. I didn't know that, Dad. I'm sorry for acting how I did right now. It's okay. Just know, although your mom's been acting a little, you know, she's just acting like that because she wants us to have the most perfect vacation. You're right, I should be more understanding. But you gotta admit, leaving three days before is way too early. Well, we did pay a lot for those flights, so... I'm with your mom on this one. We're not gonna be late. Vamonos! Come más! Mom, it's too hot to eat this! No me importa, comatelo todo! My name's Ramon and I've been a victim of caldo during the summer. I first experienced caldo during the summer in 2001. It was the hottest day of the year, and even then, my mom wouldn't turn on the AC. And that's when she called me to tell me the food was ready. So I went down to go eat. And that's when I realized she made caldo. Don't get me wrong, I like caldo, but I don't like eating caldo when it's hotter than the devil's armpit inside the house. It's already over 100 degrees. And then you give me scorching hot caldo? How am I supposed to feel? Refreshed? I never understood why my mom would insist on making caldo in the summer. There are so many better options to eat when it's hot. Like, I don't know, ice cubes? My mom always says that I complain and exaggerate when she makes caldo, but can you blame me? Each spoonful takes me deeper and deeper into a state of pain and suffering. Meanwhile, she eats caldo as if it's cereal. She does sweat when she eats it, but she claims caldo tastes better when you're covered in sweat. I'm I'm just not built like her. Eating caldo has ruined my life so much that when I see a pot on the stove, I get triggered. I used to look forward to summer, but now I dread it. It's supposed to be a time of fun and friends, but all I feel is anxiety and fear. 
over a bowl of soup. You know what people say, mother knows best, but they're wrong. Because a mother that knows best would never put her child through that suffering every summer. If I could tell my mom one thing, it would be, Mom, please stop making caldo when it's hot. Please, 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 please. <laughs>
Listen, Chris, let me show you how resourceful Mexicans are, or what I like to call Mexican life hacks. What do you mean? When we finish using something, like this butter container, we don't throw it away, we recycle it. But what if you actually want butter? See, that's the fun part. You never know what you're gonna get until you open it. That doesn't sound fun at all. Oh, look. Right now, this is just a regular, everyday Mexican mole sauce jar. But as soon as you rip the labels off and you wash it, then you get a really good reusable drinking cup. Chris, where do you keep your pots and pans? Oh, we have a rack to hold them. See, that's a waste of money. We keep our pots and pans in the oven. That seems a little excessive. No, it's not. So I'm gonna take a wild guess here and assume that you still clean the stove at your house, right? Yes, just like anyone else. See, that's too much work. We just put foil over it. And when it gets dirty, we just change it to new foil. Okay, but is that much foil really necessary? Yeah, my abuelita did go a little overboard this time. Anyway, those are just a few examples, but there's dozens of other things we do, like uh, saving plastic bags from the store, putting water in soap containers, and stuff like that. I must admit, you guys are pretty resourceful. Oh, let me guess. This isn't really chocolate milk, but a container to hold something else. Wait, no, 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 no! That one is actually what it's supposed to be. Oh. Can I have one birthday where my face isn't smashed into a cake? Just one. Ah, it's the best part. Andale, say cheese. My name is Anthony, and I'm having a birthday in a Mexican household. <laughs> birthdays are special, and Mexican birthdays are no different. That is until you realize that you're in for a rude awakening, literally. Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba el Rey David. Hoy por ser día de tu santo te las cantamos aquí. Good morning, mijo. We just wanted to sing you las mañanitas and wish you a happy birthday. Hope we didn't wake you up too early. Uh, well, I don't usually wake up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday, but thank you anyway. Dad, your guitar skills are something. Gracias, I've been practicing. Anyway, what do you want to do today? Well, sleeping in would have been nice. ¿Qué dijiste? Uh, nothing. I just want to be with family today. Ah, okay. Pues, we're going to make your day special. We have the whole day planned. Andale, get ready. Not going to lie, I'm a little scared for what they have planned. One of the great things about birthdays are receiving gifts. But sometimes the gifts my family give can be different. Come on, birthday boy. It's time to open up some presents. Here, open this one first. It's from your abuelita in Mexico. Aw, grandma got me a gift? <laughs> Wait, it kind of smells like something died in here. Ah, uh, just open it. Oh, it's a block of cheese? It's queso from your grandma's rancho. She made it from her goat's milk. Okay, a little random, but that was very thoughtful of her. Open mine next. Andale. Oh, uh, a hammer. That's interesting and very thoughtful. I'll put this to good use once I know what that good use is. Thanks, Dad. Okay, now it's time for my present. Uno y dos. Why do you always have to get a better gift than me? Ah, tú cállate. Wow, these flowers are beautiful, Mom. I love the colors and how they pop. I knew you would love them. I got them from proflowers.com. They have a lot of great options to choose from and they even deliver them to our house. I want you to save them for your quinceañera. Thank you for the flowers, Mom. But uh, I'm 27. I can't really have a quince anymore. Ah, see, another reminder that I still want a daughter. And I want Mexico to win a World Cup, but we can't always get what we want, huh? 
Another one of my favorite Mexican birthday traditions are the piñatas. They're usually filled up with candies, but my dad fills them up with other things. Mijo, look what I got you for your birthday. Oh, you got me a piñata? Thanks, Dad. But why a pink one? Yeah, I'm sorry. It was the only one left at the store. But don't worry, I'm gonna fill it up with goodies. Oh, what kind of candy did you get? Candy? Get candy que nada. I'm gonna fill it up with job applications. <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. You're 27 years old now. It's time you help out around the house. Dad, come on. It's my birthday. The least you could do is just put candy in my piñata. <laughs> I already put a roof over your head, folding your mouth and closing your back, and you're still asking for candy? Guess what, if you want candy, you go out there and you get a job and you buy all the candy you want. Okay, Dad, I get it. There's no candy. All right, well, I'm gonna go put these job applications inside of here. And don't tell your mom about this. If she finds out I didn't buy you candy, she's gonna be mad at me. And of course, birthdays wouldn't be complete without a birthday cake. But in a Mexican household, the cake is sometimes used for different purposes. Okay, who wants cake? I've been waiting for the cake all day. Me too, I'm hungry. Do you want us to sing Las Mañanitas again? Uh, no, 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 it's fine. Once was more than enough. Okay, pues, don't forget to make a wish. Feliz cumpleaños. <sighs> que le muerda. Dad, come on, I'm too old for that now. Come on guys, I'm not gonna do that. Wait, where's Dad? Here's Papa. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I saw. She was buying produce from a shopping cart. Maria, don't buy from that man. <laughs> 10 things all strong men should know. Looks like this article's for me. Let's see what I need to know. <laughs> I'm sitting there minding my business, then Maria walks in causing a ruckus. Excuse me, can you lower the volume? ¿Qué te pasa? Can you be quiet? I'm trying to learn how to be a stronger man. And I'm trying to dance. Ya callate. What does karate have to do with anything? I don't know why she said karate, but if she wants action, I'll give it to her. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> El elotero. The who? The elotero is the man who sells corn. The man who sells corn? That sounds like a math problem. He sells them in his carrito. Just see for yourself. Why would I want corn from a random man? <sighs> These old bones ain't what they used to be. Maria, you know we got canned corn inside, right? Oh my but Jesus. I couldn't believe what I saw. She was buying produce from a shopping cart. Maria, don't buy from that man. Disculpalo, está loco. Maria, back away from that man. I'm calling my local authorities right now. He was holding Maria hostage. I had no choice but to call the police. You stay right there, muchacho. La policia is on the way. Siempre actúa así? Sí. Es un gringo loco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good thinking, Maria. You save that corn for evidence. I'll stay right here and handle this hombre. In this country, there's laws, and it's my civic duty to make sure that they're enforced. You're in for a world of trouble, buddy. I know you don't have a permit for this little operation. See, I do. 
But what about a food handler's card? También. Do you pay taxes? Four times a year. Well, why do you sell from a shopping cart? Por que no? Because, because, actually, I don't know. I just never seen it before. Do you want an elote or not? Elote? I thought you sold corn. Elote means corn. Oh, well, no thank you. I don't want food from a shopping cart. Do you want it con todo? Con todo? What is that? An elote con todo has some butter, cotija cheese, a little lemon, mayonnaise. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you say mayonnaise? See, si, I covered the whole corn in it. Well, why did you start with that? I love mayo. I'll take one of those elotes, por favor. When I heard him say mayonnaise, I was showed. After all, mayo is the food of my people. You know, when you first came to the neighborhood, Maria was talking all kinds of crazy about you. Muy loca, but I tried to calm her down and tell her what a fine specimen you are. And look at you, you're doing a great job. Hey, uh, what's that red powder you're adding? Oh, I don't know how to say in English, but it's muy bien sabor. You'll like it. You wouldn't try to pull a fast one on me now, would you? No, 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 nunca, never. Okay, that's fine. I trusted you since the beginning, and I'm not gonna stop now. Tu elote está listo. Oh, well, it definitely smells very pungent, but like I always say, mama didn't raise no female dog. <laughs> what, what did you say this red powder was again? <laughs> oh, it's chili powder. It's what? This whole braid tried to poison me. My tongue is on fire. Why would you do that to me? <laughs> I've been nothing but nice to you. Ah, uh, no seas bebe. It's not that bad. Yes, it is. I've never felt such a pain before. It made me go into cardiac arrest. Oh, I can't feel my chest. <laughs> Holy moly, is this what hell feels like? <laughs> Maria, call the ambulance. I, I think I should go now. I don't want to get in trouble. If, if anyone asks, I wasn't here. Wait, don't you go anywhere. The police is on the way. Maria, is the ambulance almost here? Living in a Mexican household is putting a toll on my health, and I don't know how much longer I can last. No, why do you need all the candy? I need to make sure the candy's safe to eat. You got them from strangers, mijo. Dad, I'm not a kid. You're not gonna trick me like that. How about a treat then? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, it's all yours, it's all yours. No. My name's Ramon. Yeah. And I'm spending Halloween in a Mexican household. <sighs> Halloween is special. It's the one time of year that you can be whatever you want. A vampire, ninja, rapper, or you can be like my parents and be too cheap to buy a real costume. Oh yeah, this costume's the one. For Halloween, I'm gonna be Shrek. Hey, mijo, I need you to mop and sweep. Your tias are coming over today. Okay, let me just buy my costume first. Buy a costume? Estás loco, okay? That's a waste of money. But I need a costume for Halloween. Mijo, you know I could make the costume for you. Remember last year? Yeah. How could I forget? <laughs> I wanted to be Marshmallow the DJ but you made me to an actual marshmallow. Ya ves? And everyone liked it. No one liked it. They roasted me for four months straight and now I'm known as Fluffy Boy. See? But you're my Fluffy Boy, aren't you? Anyway, I made you another costume for this year. Really? Can't wait to try it on. So what am I supposed to be? You're a beautiful Christmas tree. Christmas tree? 
I feel like a neon statue of liberty. One of the things I love about Halloween are the scary stories. There's stories about ghosts, others about monsters, and then there's the scary stories that my dad tells. <laughs> hey, mijo, what are you up to? Oh, I'm just watching the crazy gorilla. What's up? Oh, I was just wondering if maybe you wanted to hear a scary story. Not really, but let's hear it. Okay, okay. So one time there was a boy who went to a foreign land far, far away. He went to the land to work and make a good living for his family. How is this story scary? Callate, I barely started. Anyway, where was I? So when the boy started working, he found out about a big and scary monster. How did he find the monster? He would work every day very hard. And when he would get his paychecks, he found out that his money was missing. Someone or something was taking his money. After a quick Google search, he found out that the thing that was taking his money was taxes. Really, Dad? Your scary story was about taxes? Yes, they're one of the scariest things in the world. Every check, the government takes what's mine. And don't get me started on bills. That's another scary story. <sighs> I guess we have very different definitions of scary. Uh-huh. Andale. Well, maybe this here? Lupita should try being anything for Halloween but herself. <laughs> Hey mom, I'm one of the haunted mates with some friends. I'll be back later. Rosa, I'm gonna have to call you back. My son thinks he could do whatever he wants. Who did you ask for permission? I didn't. Ah, que bonito. For Halloween, you wanna be dead or what? You want a haunted maze? Okay, just go to your bedroom, it's the same thing. Scary, spiders everywhere, and it's hard to find your way out with how dirty it is. But. I just clean. You're not going anywhere until that room of yours is clean. But it's already clean. Clean it again. Our house is gonna have the best candy on the block. Hey, ¿qué estás haciendo? Getting the candy ready for the trick or treaters. You want one? Yes. I, I, I mean, no. But but yes. But no. We're not giving away candy. What? Why not? Well, one more candy for me. And two, I don't want strangers coming to the front door. But that's what trick-or-treaters do. Yes, but we're tricking them into thinking that no one's home, so they go to another house. Treats stay here. Happy Halloween. Shh, be quiet. Why? It's just trick-or-treaters. Yes, exactly. We don't want them to know we're home. I know they turn off all the lights. Uh, sorry. No one's home. You know it's spooky season when you start seeing pumpkins everywhere. And most families like to carve their pumpkins. But my family likes to do things a little different. Hey mom, do you want to carve a pumpkin with me? Por qué? Because it's a Halloween tradition. You carve it, then you put it outside as decoration. So you want to waste a perfectly good pumpkin for decoration. Yeah, exactly. Hi, mijo. Your family in Mexico can barely afford to eat, and here you are wanting to waste food. Okay, mom, we don't have to carve the pumpkin. We could just paint it instead. Paint it? Híjole! Now you want to play with your food. In mi casa, we don't do that. All right, I don't need a lecture. So what am I supposed to do with this pumpkin? I don't know. Ask Jack. Who's Jack? Jack. Oh, lantern. <laughs> Halloween is fun and a day to let loose. But my parents make that hard. Next Halloween, I hope they decide to not be themselves just for that one day. <gasps> Where am I?
Hi, Ramon. Who are you? La Llorona. Wait, I thought La Llorona was supposed to be a woman. Who said I'm not a woman? True. Sorry for assuming. So, where am I? You're far, far away from home. But I want to play a little game. A game? Yes, a game. If you don't play, you'll be hit with a thousand junk glass. <laughs> but what's stopping me from just hanging up and calling 911? Uh, they're closed on Sundays? Oh, yeah! That makes sense. It, yes, yes, it does. Anyway, for your first task, you need to free yourself from the handcuffs. Where's the key? In one of the cookie tins next to you. What cookie tins? I just see sewing kits. Yes, good job. They are sewing kits, but one of them actually contains cookies, and that one contains the key. Good luck. <laughs> Thank God. Ramon, you're supposed to use the key, not eat the cookies. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm free! I'm free! Excellent. Now, for your next task. Wait, where are you going? I'm free now. I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> I told you if you don't play, you'll get hit with chanclas. Okay, now what? Behind you is a box. Open it. <sighs> oh, it's a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? I know everything. Go ahead. Take a bite of the cake. Okay, well, is there a fork? You don't need a fork, because I want you to push your face into the cake. Come on, I'm too old for that. Do as I say. Gele mueda, gele mueda, gele mueda, gele mueda. Why are you torturing me like this? Are you ready for the next task? I guess. Oh look, a wild Hispanic mom has appeared. Wait, another person! Ma'am, thank God you're here to help me. I'm talking to this dude on the phone, or woman, and they're torturing me. Please, help me. Ma'am? She can't help you. She's not conscious. But I want you to tell this Hispanic mom, gay. Gay? I can't tell a Hispanic mom that. Are you trying to get me killed? Do it now. Please forgive me. Gay. Louder. Gay. Oh, she's gone. I thought I was dead for sure. Not yet. Now, for your final torture, grab the box on top of your head. On top of my head? Grab the object inside of it. It's an elote. A delicious, fresh elote. Oh no! Please don't make me eat an elote. That would be terrible. No, I'm not gonna make you eat it. I want you to drop it. Like, on the floor? Yes, drop the elote on the floor. Man, screw you. I'll take a million chocolates to the face before I ever disrespect an elote. 
bring in the chunk glass! <sighs> I've never seen anyone clean this before. My mom is just torturing me at this point. Hey, mijo, are you almost done? There's a lot more chores to do. Yes, mom, I'm almost done. My name is Anthony, and I'm on spring break in a Mexican household. Spring break is supposed to be a vacation. You know, having fun and sleeping in. But, of course, my mom would never let that happen. Mom, can you keep it down? I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to sleep and you're being a bit loud. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was bothering you. Disculpa me. Thank you. I just want a little extra sleep. Is that too much to ask for? Mom! Hijo de tu madre! If you don't want me to vacuum, then you come do it. Right now! Ay, comadre, que de Spring break is one of my favorite times of the year because I get to hang out with my friends and do fun activities. Oh wait, that's right. My mom doesn't let me. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm gonna go watch a movie with Michael. Ah, a movie? ¿Y quién te dio permiso? Cause I know you didn't ask me. Permission? Did I stutter? N no, but mom, I'm on spring break. ¿Y qué? Spring break? Mis nalgas, eh? You still have to ask for permission. Okay, well, can I go to the movies with Michael? Mm, no. What? Why not? Porque this casa is in a hotel. You can't come and go as you please. And you, you didn't take the dog out for a walk last night. Next time, do your chores. That's not even a dog. That's a robot vacuum. <sighs> Mom, what is the point of washing in the sink? We have a washing machine. Por que no? That's how we used to do it in Mexico. Okay, but we're not in Mexico. We're in America and it's 2021. There's this thing called technology. But technology doesn't build character. I don't care about building character. I just want to enjoy my spring break. A ver, I want to see how clean it is. I still see some caca stains. Scrub harder. Don't get me wrong. My mom doesn't take all the blame for my miserable spring break. My dad also makes me do pointless things. Dad, I was not planning on holding a flashlight for my spring break. And I wasn't expecting to wait an entire lifetime for a grandson. When are you getting married, by the way? I already told you, I'm focusing on school right now. Ah, uh, when I was your age, I was already married with three kids. Three kids? But I'm an only child. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah th th that's what I mean. Uh, go get me the whatchamacallit by the two bucks underneath the papers. What thing? You know, the thing I asked for when we went to your Theo's to fix his car, and it was next to the baby carriage but underneath the whistle? That's the thing I need. I have no idea what you're talking about, Dad. Hi, mijo. Aren't you in school for engineering? You should be smarter. No, I go to school for art. Oh, well, that explains why you're a little... What do you mean by that? Nothing. Never mind. Just keep holding the flashlight. You can't mess that up. I'm young. I'm supposed to be enjoying my spring break. But instead, I'm just doing chores. Hundreds of them. A actually, thousands. Please. Send help. My name's Ramon, and I've been a victim of caldo during the summer. I first experienced caldo in the summer in 2001. I was sitting in front of the fan just trying to cool down from the heat because my mom she she doesn't let me turn on the AC that's when she called me telling me that the food was ready so I went down to to go eat and that's when I realized that 
she had made caldo don't get me wrong I like caldo but I don't like eating caldo when when it's hotter than the devil's armpit inside the house I never really understood why my mom would insist on making caldo in the summer there are so many other options that are better to eat when it's hot like I don't know ice cubes eating caldo has ruined my life to the point that when I see a pot on the stove I get flashbacks you know people always say mother knows best but that's wrong because a mother that knows best would never put her child through that suffering every summer if I could tell my mom one thing it would be mom please stop making caldo when it's hot please 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 me levanto temprano voy a la tienda a comprar todo lo que necesito comprarle su favorito el caldo le encanta a mi hijo pero qué pasa cuando ya está listo cuando ya estoy preparando cuando ya me maté en la cocina qué pasa mi hijo vente a comer qué me dice no quiero no quiero malagradecido come on tap out no I'll never tap out okay uh, okay I tap out I tap out I tap out oh, 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 oh. Uh, did I walk in at a bad time? No, we were just, um, uh, wrestling. Oh, I see. I didn't know you were into WWE. Whoa, 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 take that back. Have you never seen Nacho Libre? No, I thought the movie looked dumb. Relax, I got this. I'll just meet up with you later. This isn't WWE. This is Lucha Libre. It's a popular form of wrestling from Mexico. So what makes it so different from normal wrestling? Think of it as American wrestling, but with culture. The amount of dedication, passion, and sacrifice that a luchador needs is just incredible. But isn't wrestling fake? But isn't wrestling fake? There's nothing fake about Desnucadora. I can show you if you want. No, I'm okay. So, is Desnucadora's a move or something? Yeah, it's one of many. There's other moves like Patadas Voladoras, Mortal, and Quebradora, just to name a few. That sounds pretty cool. It's like they're comic book characters. Actually, yeah. To a lot of people, luchadores are like heroes. And like the comic books, there are good guys called Tecnicos and bad guys called Rudos. Huh, it's more complex than I thought. So, luchadores put those masks on? Well, not every luchador wears a mask, but the ones that do are unique to them. These are two of the greatest luchadores to ever grace this earth, Blue Demon and El Santo. El Santo. He was an icon, and more importantly, he never revealed his face. What do you mean? For a masked luchador, the mask is everything. Removing the mask or getting a mask by an opponent is the ultimate defeat. During his entire career, he never revealed his face even in public. It wasn't until 10 days before his death that he finally revealed his face. Wow, that's so beautiful. Have you ever been to a match? The energy, passion, cheering, booing, the drama. Going to a lucha match is an experience that you cannot get anywhere else. So you've been to matches? Oh no, I've never been, but I've seen videos. Oh. Well, wanna wrestle now? Can I be El Santo? Sure. I must warn you, I was a champion back in my day. You wrestled in high school? Oh no, I used to be in the chess team. Hello? Mom, I'm in the middle of an intense fight. I'm not gonna help you with the groceries right now. You're lucky we had to take the groceries in. What? You're the lucky one. 
I was about to do my patata voladores on you. Mom, why do I have to eat this? It's freaking summer. No me importa. I don't care if it's 103 degrees in this house. You're gonna eat that caldo. Niño malagradecido. My name is Anthony. I'm from Fontana, California, and I'm spending my summer in a Mexican household. If there's one thing I hate more than stale Takis, it's living here during the summer. It gets so hot in here, sometimes I feel like I'm living in the devil's butt crack. Ugh, I'm losing my mind right now. It's way too hot in here to function. Ugh, that's disgusting. I don't care what my mom says, I'm turning on the AC. Hey, hey, hey! Who said you could turn on the AC? Because I didn't! But it's really hot today. Can I please turn it on? Ah, no exageres. It's not even that bad. Mom, look at yourself. You're drenched in sweat. Ah, it's not sweat. It's, uh, it's perspiration. That literally means the same thing. Tu callate. I said no AC, so no AC. I, I just need like 32 seconds of AC. That's it. Do you have AC money? A ver. You still can't turn it on. I do not understand how my mom can withstand the heat. And don't even get me started on my dad. It's like the hotter it gets, the more things he wants to get done. Lord, what have I done to deserve this punishment? I file my taxes every single year. What more do you want from me? Híjole, mijo, are you doing that thing with the freezer again? No, Dad, I'm just trying to cool down. Oh, thank goodness. I'm still scarred from last time. Anyway, mijo, I need your help. With what? I need you to help me fix our fans, build an extra room, and replace the foundation on the entire house. What? It is way too hot to be doing all of that. Okay, and? These things still need to be done. But dad, it's summer break. I'm supposed to be relaxing. Yes, okay, okay. I've been working since I was four years old. Do you know what I did for summer break? Let me guess, you work 30 hours a day. Actually, no. Your grandma took me to a beautiful water park. I had the time of my life, but it was after I did my chores and helped out my dad. Now's your turn, vamonos. If it gets any hotter, I'm gonna melt. Mijo, I know you always tell us about how hot it gets in the house, and well, I think I got a good idea. We could turn the AC on? No, I said good idea. Anyway, look what I got you, a mini fan. Mom, I'm pretty sure that two inch fan isn't gonna cool me down. Por que no? It's strong, mira. Ah, see? It feels so good. It's fine, Mom. I'll just continue suffering down here. Ah, <sighs> wait. You know what? I have a better idea. Ah, uh, Yaves? I told you it was a good idea. As if the heat wasn't enough, my mom always has this great idea every summer to eat hot soup. Toma, tu favorito, caldo. Oh great, exactly what I wanted in this 110 degree weather. 120 degree soup. I cooked this all day, just for you. Thank you, mom. You shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. You know I do it because I love you. Andale, try it. <laughs> uh, it's so delicious and refreshing. Ah, ya ves? I knew you would like it. That's why I got you seconds. What do you, what do you mean, seconds? Toma. Oh, wow. I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> it's hot. You're gonna feel so much better, trust me. A little bit goes a long way. If that's a little bit, 
I don't want to know what a law is. Mocosa, esa mocosa tenía algo. Sospechaba, lo sentía en mi espina. Gosh darn it. I really hurt my back last night. I knew riding that mechanical bull was a bad idea. Hey, Maria, I'm gonna go get some food. Do you want something? Hello? I don't think Maria cleans her ears very well. She has terrible hearing. Maria, I'm talking to you. Cállate, I'm watching my novela. Okay, okay, relax. I was just trying to be nice. Oh, oh. I don't know what happened, but I guess I stepped on something that made me lose my balance. Maria, help me, I'm a fool. Maria, please. Oh. Yo no sé por qué andaba gritando. No más ocupaba bajar un pie. Oh. Oh. I fell down at least 50 feet down the stairs. I was in excruciating pain. Frank, why are you being dramatic? Oh, take me to a hospital. I don't think I'm gonna make it. You fell down one step. No, for reals. I need immediate medical attention. I'm running out of time. I can feel my soul. Starting to leave my body. Yo no sé por qué andaba llorando. No más se cayó ocho pulgadas. Es un chillón. I think I broke my leg in five places. It hurts so bad. Frank, you're fine. I'm not fine. I'm going to be paralyzed. It was nice knowing you, Maria. I'll see you on the other side. Ah. Well, what are you doing? You're killing me faster. If you were paralyzed, you would not have felt that. Okay, but I still want to go to the hospital. You don't need the hospital. You just need Vaporu. Every time I talk to her, she starts speaking crazy, saying random words. Vapor what? Vaporu. What the heck is this? It's Vaporu. You can put it on your leg. The only thing this is going to do is make a mess. Frank, trust me. In Mexican households, this fixes everything. What do you mean, everything? Remember how the fridge was broken last week? Yeah? What about it? I fixed it by rubbing some Vaporu on it. What? That's not possible. I don't believe that for one second. Then why does the fridge work now? That doesn't even make sense. Maria has started to lose her marbles. She's going a little cuckoo if you ask me. When I was younger, I had a broken heart. I rubbed some vaporu on it and I was happy again. Okay, you really expect me to believe that? Yes, I've been using this stuff for years or you can continue to be in pain up to you. Okay, fine, put some on me. It can't make things worse, right? You're gonna feel so much better, trust me. A little bit goes a long way. If that's a little bit, I don't wanna know what a lot is. You literally scooped out half the bottle. Ah, don't be a chicken. I use this on my kids. You're about to feel like a brand new man. Uh, you know what? I think I'm just gonna ride out the pain. Thank you, though. Oh, no. You interrupted my novella. I'm not going to let that happen again. What, what do you mean by that? I found out exactly what she meant by that. Feliz Navidad! Mom, how many more tamales do I have to eat? I can't take it anymore. Ay, mijito, we have a thousand more. You're eating tamales till August. <laughs> Feliz Navidad! <laughs>
<laughs> Feliz Navidad. My name is Anthony, and I'm spending Christmas in a Mexican house. If you live in a Mexican house during the holidays, 99% of the time, you're gonna have to help make tamales. And guess what? You're making a lot of them. All right, mom, uh, I'm gonna head out now. I'll see you later. Hey, what do you mean? I'm making tamales. Okay, well, good luck with that. Can't wait to try them. No, 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 no. I mean, we are making tamales. <laughs> what do you mean, we, we? Mom, you know I've, I've had these plans. We were gonna go to the movies and we were gonna get dinner afterwards. Like, I told you I was gonna go out. You didn't tell me I had to help you make tamales. Like, why do all of a sudden I gotta help you make tamales? No, no, no. So, how many tamales do we have to make? Well, your cousins from Mexico are coming, your tios from Texas, and don't forget your dad's family. So, I'd say 1,000 tamales. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Mom. There's no way we can actually make a thousand. <laughs> no, I'm serious. One thousand! There's no way we need that many tamales. What are we, feeding an army? Hi, we're Mexican. So yes, apurate. We have a lot of work to do. We have 967 tamales to go. Apurate. There's no way I'm gonna feel my hands after this. Mexican parents can never turn down a good deal. And that's why my dad likes to get his Christmas gifts at the swap meet. <sighs> the kids are gonna love their gifts. Dad, what are you doing with those random toys? Oh, I'm just wrapping Christmas gifts for your primos. Mira, I got them a Fortnite character. Yeah, that is not a Fortnite character. That's like an ugly Cabbage Patch kid. Huh? Como que no? The guy at the swap meet told me this was a Fortnite exclusive. Yeah, you um, you got hustled. <sighs> Mira what else I got. The iPhone 16. Hello. Bueno, bueno. <laughs> that is definitely not an iPhone, but I'm sure they'll love it. No, they're really gonna love this last one. Mira, an authentic John Wick mask. <laughs> I'm John Wick. Now I'm your papa. <laughs> Dad, I've seen every John Wick movie and I can confirm that is not John Wick. John Wick, papa. John Wick, papa. <laughs> I gotta say, your gift choices are pretty mid. Just wait till you see the gift that I got you. <laughs> I'm so excited to see what you got me. Most people spend the holidays relaxing, listening to Christmas music, sipping hot cocoa, but in my house, my mom makes me clean. Hey, get off the game and help clean. What? You never said I had to clean. Pues, you should have read my mind. Well, what's the point of cleaning if the family's gonna come over and make a mess anyway? Why would you clean your butt if it's gonna get dirty anyways? Huh. That's actually a very valid point. Well, what do I have to clean? The top of the cabinet? Seriously? No one is gonna see the top of the cabinet. Hi, you never know. Your deal's kind of tall. And do you want to be known as the family with dust on top of the cabinets? Huh? Mom, it is not that serious. And anyways, Theo isn't that tall. He's only like four foot seven. Holy, the more complaining you do, the longer it's gonna take. Okay, well, I'm almost done. Ah, perfecto. Once you're done, I need you to sweep the roof next. Please say psych. No, the ladder's outside already. <laughs> jingle ball, jingle ball, I love Christmas. <sighs> next jingle thing you know, Christmas. she's gonna ask me to mop the grass. That's a great idea. And every year during Christmas, my family comes over and they take over the house, especially the kids. Uh, who are you guys? We're your cousins from Texas, don't you remember us? Uh, not really, but why are you guys in my room? Your mom said we could play in here. What? And who said you could use my laptop? Your mother let me use this computer. Why is that baby eating my game? Your mom said she could eat it. <laughs> well, are you guys gonna clean up this mess at least? No, you are. Mom! <sighs> okay, here's the Christmas gift I was talking about. All right, let's see what you got me. <laughs> oh, a used drill. It wasn't on my Christmas list, but um, thank you, I guess. It's one of the best. And now that you have one, I need you to go to the backyard and fix the fence, reinforce it, the wind brought it down. Now if you're done wait, with wait, that. Wait, wait, 
the did, balcony. Did you get me this just so I could do all your chores? They're not my chores, they're our chores. So once you're done with the balcony, I need you to go to the patio, do that, get some two by fours, fix it up, you got the drill. And once you're done with that. My name is Anthony and I've been a victim of the chancla. I first experienced the chancla back when I was seven years old. It was a Sunday morning and my mom woke me up because she said it was time to go to church. But I, I was tired. So I told her I didn't want to go. That's when she reached down, grabbed her chancla and hit me. No words can describe the pain that chancla caused me. And ever since then, my life hasn't been the same. I've developed post-traumatic stress disorder. And now every time I see a chancla, I get triggered. <laughs> it has gotten so bad that I can't do anything without fear of the chancla hitting me. At one point, I thought I could hide from the chancla, but I quickly learned it's impossible. Mexican mothers and abuelas have the best aim, and it doesn't matter how far you are, they can get you. I never understood why my mom had to use a chancla to discipline me. Why couldn't I just go on timeout like all the other kids? Mom, if you're watching this, I want you to know, it hurts. Me vale que llore y voy a buscar otra chancla para que aprenda, para que vea que tiene que hacer todos sus quehaceres, que vaya a la iglesia, macriado. My name is Anthony and I'm a victim of Mexican life hacks. Don't get me wrong. I love that my parents like to save money, but there's a difference between saving money and living life miserably. Have you ever tried looking for butter in a Hispanic household? It's almost impossible. You open a container and it's beans. You open another and it's salsa. There's no reason why I should take over 10 containers to finally find the one with butter in it. And it doesn't stop there. For some reason, my parents think that you store pots and pans in the oven. So whenever I need to use the oven, I have to empty it out first. But when I go to my friend Jake's house, his family hangs their pots and pans. So he never has trouble using his oven. Well, at least my family has cookies. <laughs> oh wait, that's right, we don't. Because instead of cookies, my abuela puts her sewing kit in there. Do you know how it feels to be excited to eat cookies only to open up a container of disappointment? And don't even get me started on the hand soap. Mom, adding water to a little bit of soap doesn't make more soap. It just makes water with a little bit of soap. But all of that is nothing compared to my mom's favorite Mexican life hack, vaporu. It doesn't matter if I have a flu, a headache, or even a broken leg. My mom thinks that vapor rub is the cure to everything. If you're also a victim of Mexican life hacks, I wish I could tell you things get better, but they don't. But I do want you to know you're not alone. Okay, okay, let go. Not till you apologize. I can't breathe. Fine. What is your problem, man? You, you are my problem. You're telling me lies. What do you mean? 
I just said that Mexican Independence Day was coming up and all of a sudden you start choking me. How? If we're in September, Cinco de Mayo is in May. Cinco de Mayo and Mexican Independence Day are two different things. What do you mean? <sighs> People always confuse those holidays, but today I'm clearing things up. What are you looking at? Cinco de Mayo is on May 5th. It commemorates the day that the Mexican army successfully defended the city of Puebla against the French in 1862. The entire battle only lasted a day. Just like my last relationship. Ramon, who are you talking to? Chris, just come over here and sit down. So when is Mexican Independence Day? Mexican Independence Day is on September 16th. And it's exactly that. It's when Mexico got its independence from Spain back in 1810. But how did they get their independence? I'm glad you asked. Follow me. In September of 1810, a priest by the name of Miguel Hidalgo called for Mexico's liberation from Spain. The call to rise up against the Spanish is known as El Grito de Dolores, or Cry of Dolores. It's named after the town of Dolores, Mexico, where the speech took place. And it went something like this. Enough is enough. Together, we can rise up against the Spanish. It's time to be free. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! Wow, he really said that? Well, no one really knows what he said, but his words inspired and the message spread throughout the land. The speech did spark an 11-year battle that resulted in Mexico's independence in 1821. 11 years? That's more than... 10 years. Yeah, it is, but it doesn't compare to the almost three centuries of Spanish colonial rule. Wow, that's like more than two centuries. Mm hmm And it wasn't until Spain signed the Treaty of Cordoba that Mexico finally got its independence. So do you guys celebrate? Yeah, we do. I'll show you how. Every year on September 15th, the night before Mexican independence, the Mexican president recreates El Grito on the balcony of the National Palace. Ooh, that sounds fun. It is. El Grito celebrates the heroes of the Mexican independence movement, and after each line, the audience replies with, Viva! Viva! Exactly like that. And at the end, the president also rings a bell as another tribute to Hidalgo. Viva! Okay, okay, that's good. Anyway, you can also watch El Grito on TV, as most people do. Mexicanos! Viva los héroes que nos dieron patria! Viva! Is that me? Shh. Viva Hidalgo! Viva! Viva Morelos! Viva! Viva la independencia nacional! Viva México! Viva México! Viva México! Viva México! Oh, that looks so fun. Do they have a party afterwards? Oh, Mexican independence in Mexico is celebrated with parties, mariachis, parades, and food. Food sounds so good right now. What type of food is usually eaten? How about I show you? Follow me. How many more times am I gonna follow you around? You're eating already? Yeah, I was a little hungry. So are you gonna keep eating or are you gonna explain the food? Oh yeah. Well, traditionally, on Mexican Independence Day, people like to eat menudo, which I was enjoying till you rudely interrupted me. It's also common to eat tamales and birria. I love tamales and birria. Can I have a bite now? Not yet. I have one more to show you. This is chiles and nogada. Oh, wow. What is that? These are stuffed poblano peppers topped with a walnut-based cream sauce, parsley, and pomegranate seeds. It's beautiful. What better way to celebrate Mexican independence than with a dish that represents the colors of the Mexican flag? The Mexican flag has an eagle. Does that mean it has eagle meat inside it? No, Chris, it does not have eagle meat. Well, that's disappointing. Anyway, now you know the difference between Cinco de Mayo and Mexican Independence Day, and I never want you to confuse the two again. Or what? <laughs> I promise I won't confuse the two. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Fine. You know what else you should know? What? 
that the Crazy Gorilla just launched their brand new street corn or elote plush on bestcoast.com for a limited time only. Okay, I need to buy five of these. Where at? <laughs> bestcoast.com. Doesn't it look delicious? It looks scrumptious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you should buy yours too right now at bestcoast.com. I mean, look at this thing. Whew. And if you guys like the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe for more videos, and follow. Have a Casanova. Have Casanova. Hey, wait, have Casanova. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry. Bleep that. Bleep that. But we hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys next time. Mwah. My name is Ramon, and I'm a victim of Que Le Muerda. I first became a victim of Que Le Muerda at the age of eight. It was my birthday party, and it was time for the cake. My family started singing happy birthday, and I thought nothing of it. But once they finished singing, they started saying, Que Le Muerda. I was confused at first, but I love cake. So of course I was gonna bite it. But going in for that bite was a huge mistake. What happened next is disgraceful and unforgivable. As I was going in for a bite, they, they smashed my face on the cake. The people who I trusted the most in life laughing at my pain a day that's supposed to be a celebration. Now, a day of betrayal. My relationship with them has never been the same. And that phrase still haunts me to this day. I can't sleep without hearing que le muerda in my nightmares. It has gotten so bad that I can't even enjoy a meal anymore. I have to constantly look over my shoulder just to make sure that no one is there to smash my face. If you're also a victim, I want you to know that you're not the only one. But next time your family sings you happy birthday, be prepared. Que le muerda, que le muerda, que le muerda. My name is Gabby and I'm a victim of my mom. Asado el chile. The first time I experienced my mom roasting el chile, I was eight years old. I was in my bedroom and all of a sudden this thick layer of smoke comes in. Next thing you know, my eyes start burning and I start coughing and choking uncontrollably. And there's no warning, it just happens. To make matters worse, when a Hispanic mom is asando el chile, the whole house is uninhabitable for hours. It has gotten to a point that when I see a chile, I get triggered. I've even experienced irreparable damage to my eyes and lungs. <laughs> I have to carry a gas tag with me everywhere I go. I've tried everything to stop the smoke, but nothing works. I've opened windows, I've bought fans, I've even bought a gas mask. But there's no escaping it. I mean, I never understood how a Hispanic mom could not feel the same pain that we feel. It's like they're immune to the smoke or something. Being a victim of someone asando el chile is something I will never wish upon anyone else. It has been one of the hardest things that I've ever had to endure in my life.